Good afternoon, Honorians! And first of all, thank you po sa lahat ng nag-attend sa meeting na ito. Yes, good afternoon po sa ating lahat. Gusto po tayo. Sana po okay lang po kayo. Um, also, we would like to greet po our participants for today's webinar. Pati po yung mga aspiring CPAs po natin na nanonood ngayon sa kanika nilang mga bahay naka-join in sa ating live stream via Facebook. Also, I would like to send my greetings po sa ating mga honorable speakers, sa ating mga respectable faculty members, and also po, dito po sa ating mga hardworking and uh, officers po natin, tsaka lahat po ng participants ngayon sa ating gym. At hello po sa inyong lahat. And of course, kailangan nyo rin pong malaman ang mga MC ninyo today. I am Vanessa Santuyo of BSA2F. And I am Evangeline Elizabeth Bernal of BSA2A. And we will be your hosts for today's webinar entitled CPA Chasing the Path Towards Achievement Accounting Webinar Session Book 2 Featuring Intermediate Accounting po. Presented to us po, of course, ng ating Damso JPIA and Youth on the Rock. Yes, hello po sa ating lahat. And without further ado, let's start with our house rules po. First, pakimute na lang po yung mga mic. Kasi po, after naman ng discussion, bibigyan naman po kayo ng chance. And second is, while nagdi-discuss po yung mga speaker natin, listen attentively. And lastly, sit back and relax. Now, let's give honor to God, to our country, and our university through prayer and singing the national anthem and dance to Him. And so before we start, let us come into the presence of the Lord. Let us close our eyes and bow down our heads. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you, Panginoon, for giving us this day, for giving us the opportunity again to experience you, to encounter you, to encounter your love, your grace, and your mercy. Lord, as we gather together, Lord, sa event po na ito, we pray for your guidance, we pray for your anointing. Bless us, O Lord, as we do, as we work with our hands. May your guidance be upon us and lead us, Lord, as we encourage one another, as we learn together. We pray, Lord, that uh, mas makapag-build po kami ng relationship sa isa't isa. And Lord, uh, it will glorify your name. May you bless each and every one, even the speakers, at lahat po ng kikilos, lahat po ng nasa likod ng program na ito, and even our learners, Lord God. As we do this, Lord, we pray na kami din po, Lord, ay matuto pa, mas matuto pa, Lord God, sa aralin ng ito. This is all we pray in Jesus' name.
nanonood sa kanika nilang mga bahay sa ating mga aspiring future, yung mga ating certified public accountants. Hello po sa inyo. Sana okay po kayo. Thank you po for making time po kahit po na tanghaling tapat at medyo busy po tayo ay nandito po tayo. Thank you po sa inyo. So Vanessa, kumusta ka? Kumusta ang online class? Yung online class natin ngayon ay medyo challenging talaga pero eto lahat tayo ay nakakasabay at kayang-kaya natin yan. Tayong mga CPA malalakas talaga at matsatsaga. Kayo ba? Yung experience nyo? Yes. Kumusta kayo? Kumusta kayo? Nanonood sa atin ngayon. Kumusta kayo? Kumusta yung online class nyo? Alam ko mahirap para sa ating lahat but I hope na somehow eh, nakakasabay tayo. Kaya natin lahat yan. Hindi ka may na-encounter ka bang problem ngayon? Ganyan. Siyempre, nagkakaproblema tayo kapag online class kasi minsan mabagal yung internet. So, kapag discussion, nahihirapan tayo sa pakikisabay pag nagdi-discuss yung mga teacher natin. So, yun. Yun lang naman yung mga problema na encounter natin. Medyo stressful, pero kayang-kaya. Okay pa ba yung lahat? Gising pa? Gising pa kayo? Sana gising pa kayo. Gising pa yan. 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 Okay, may mga nagko-comment yan. Gising pa sila. Okay, buti naman gising pa kayo. Dahil mahaba-haba pa itong usapan na to. Pero we, sure naman tayo na itong webinar na to is puno ng knowledge, puno ng learnings, tsaka magkakaroon kayo ng inspiration. Kaya, station lang kayo. Naririnig niyo naman ako, wala namang problema sa audio ko. Okay lang? Okay. okay lang. Thank you. May mga pasensya na kayo kung may maririnig kayong mga background noises kasi... Normal po. <laughs> Normal po talaga yan at may encounter po talaga natin. Ayan. Kumusta naman po? Sana po, sana po kahit na tanghaling tapat eh, okay. Okay pa po tayo. Kahit po nilalabanan ng antok. <laughs> And now we will proceed po sa ating next speaker. Uh, ating first speaker po, hindi na po natin patatagalin po para agad po natin ma-absorb yung learning. Okay po. Introduce na po natin yung ating first first speaker. Um, ready na po? 
Okay, a graduate of BSBA Marketing Management from Rizal Technological University, Bonnie Campus, a former database admin at Globe Telecom, former sales representative of ActiServe Corp, Nestle Ice Cream Distributor, a graduate of the Signatis Advanced Life Coaching Webinar Workshop, a certified designated life coach, also the current campus coordinator for Mandaluyong and San Juan area. Let's all give a warm welcome to Ms. Clarissa Isabel Reyes. Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Can I have a thumbs up? Sa ating chat box, ayan sa screen din. Please naman, pa-open naman ang inyong mga camera. Ayan si Sheila, sinarado pa yung ano, camera niya. No? Hello, Diana. Hello, um, sino to? Uh, si Ian. Hello, Angeline. Hello, Anna. Hello, Kimberly. So, for today, ayan, gising na gising na ba kayo? Parang ayoko na nga lumabas nung sa ano, yung intro eh. <laughs> Talagang nilagay lahat ng credentials. So, so ayun, shout out kay Coach Mondi for inviting me here sa ating session sa JP Adabsu. So, hello sa lahat ng mga kadabsu natin dyan. Sino dito ang um, aamin na coach? Pagod na kami. <laughs> Sino po dito ang magre-react na coach? Antok na antok pa po. Ayan, sige, pa-chat naman dyan kung ano ang feels mo ngayong afternoon para alam naman natin kung kamusta ka na ba, kung okay ka pa ba. Diba? Because today, spice up ni Coach Clark ang yung hapon by sharing the power of five. Meron akong isa-share ngayon na limang matitinding points para ma-overcome mo ang tinatawag nating pandemic fatigue. This uh, quarantine, okay? Sino po dito ang simula nung quarantine, last year pa yon tama, nag-one year na tayo kasi March 15 yung nagsimula talagang lockdown sa buong NCR. Pero hindi pa rin nakaka-move on. At still, nagtatanong pa rin, di ba, kailan tayo uh, makalalabas at kailan talaga tayo makakapagsimula ulit ng tropa banding dahil nga naman ngayon ay April. Tama ba? Lahat po tayo ay nangangarap na makapag-swimming sana. Di ba? Kung sana walang pandemic, lahat dyan nasa swimming, lahat dyan nasa piknikan. So, uh, I want everyone na kung kaya nyo naman mag-open cam, please open your cam. Because we will have an exercise for today, okay? Uh, magbibilang si Coach Clark ng 5 seconds. Tapos gusto ko, um, piliin mo kapag halimbawa um, yung choice mo ay number 1, uh, ilalagay mo sa screen natin 1. Kung ang choice mo ay number 2, ang ilalagay mo sa screen natin ay number 2. Para lahat kayo ay nakikita natin ang ang lahat. So IT, hold on ka lang dyan, no? May pa-exercise mo na si Coach Clark. So, Sino yung mga naka-open cam na? Ayan, nakita ko na sila Sheila, sila Leirina, hello Lowen, Mika. Ayan, pa-open cam naman. Ayan, si Evangeline. Ang ganda ni Evangeline, no? So, hello din kay Vanessa. So, eto ngayon ang mga choices, okay? Five seconds lang, mabilis lang to. Number one, okay? Ano ang mahirap gawin kapag umuulan? Number one, maligo. O number two, hindi matulog. In three, two, one. <laughs> Okay, okay lang sa akin na hindi matulog Pero hirapan talaga ako maligo So ayan, katulad din na Erica Okay, si Anna, number two daw ba? Diba? Okay, next question tayo Kailangan mabilis lang tayo Okay, ano ang hindi mo uh, magawa ngayong quarantine talaga Hindi mo talaga ma-start Number one, mag-diet Number two, mag-exercise In three, two, one, two <laughs> Okay lang na hindi ako kumain pero nahirapan talaga ako mag-exercise. Ayan si Loen, two. Si Anna, number one. O, three na. Three na question. Okay, ngayong quarantine, sino ang hindi mo matiis? Yung mga aso na maingay o yung prop mo na hindi nagtuturo pero grabe yung magpa-exam. One, two, three, go. <laughs> Siguro number one na lang ako kasi hindi naman ako nag-aaral eh. Pero madami sumagot ang ng two. Ayan, yung iba, ano ba mga answers nyo? Makisama naman kayo. Ayan, si Glyza, number two din. Si Anna, number one. So, bakit pinapagawa to ni Coach Clark? Because um, this trying times, no, mapapansin nyo mga students, ang dami pong nangyayari sa paligid nyo. Okay? Um, hindi lang basta nakikinig kayo. Ngayon nga, ngayon pa nga lang, tama ba? Ang dami nga hindi naka-open cam. Marami namang dyan, legit talaga ang reason na mabagal ang internet, no? Mahina ang signal. Pero hanggang ngayon, may wifi na kayo, naka-off cam ka pa rin. O, shout out sa'yo. Sana tamaan ka today para naman may magbago 
sa ano mo, sa routine mo ngayon, ngayong nag-online tayo. Ay, data lang daw si Glyza. No worries, Glyza. We, we feel you. Na, dina, dumaan din si Coach Clark sa data fields, no? Na nawawala-wala ka, no? Tapos bigla ka na lang susulpot ulit, nakikik ka sa Zoom or sa iba, ibang mga meeting. So, bakit pinagawa yon ni Coach Clark at bakit ang bilis ni Coach Clark uh, mag-ask sa'yo ng mga choices mo? Because, alam mo ba, there is power in five seconds. Did you know na sa bawat pagkising mo, whether is ipipindutin mo yung snooze ng alarm o babangon ka, it takes five seconds to to do that decision. Kasi after five seconds, matutulog ka na ulit. Relate? Pa-thumbs up naman dyan sa screen. Tama ba? O kaya, iikot-ikot ka muna ang lagay pag online class, hindi ka na maliligo. So, syempre, pag hindi ka naligo, may muta-muta pa tayo, hindi ka na rin mag-open ka. Hindi naman lahat uh, laging ganun, no? Pero sometimes, ganun yung nangyayari hanggang sa maging routine na natin siya, hanggang sa maging paulit-ulit na natin siyang ginagawa. And results to what? To having that kind of um feeling na nagsasawa ka na po talaga sa ginagawa natin. That's why sabi nga po ni um, Dr. Paul Nestor, an MD assistant professor in the Department of Psychiatry and Behavioral Science at Johns Hopkins, Hopkins University. Sabi doon, when we thought this health crisis might last a few months, we psych ourselves up to cope with it. Now that we understand there's no definite end that is causing widespread pandemic fatigue. So yung nararanasan mo pala, student, na buryong-buryo ka na, okay, um, nawawalan ka na ng gana, yan po ay cause ng tinatawag natin pandemic fatigue. So makinig ka mabuti, inote mo to. Ano pong definition ng pandemic fatigue? When we say pandemic fatigue, it is referring to exhaustion. You may be feeling after months of spending extra time and energy dealing with our new pandemic lifestyle and all the struggles is it bought it bots on everyone or it bots on our routines. Kaya kita pinapili kanina na mga mga mahihirap gawin lalo na ngayong pandemic kasi yun naman ang reality tama ba dati nakakapag-exercise pa tayo ngayon hindi na tayo nakakapag-exercise marami ang ano talaga sobrang um, naging ano conscious sa pagpapahalaga sa kanin kaya madami tayong naging chubby naging chubby tayong lahat no kasi sayang yung kanin guys no wala talaga eh sayang naman kung hindi natin kakainin so wala wala nawala ang ating uh, discipline sa pagkain kasi bakit compared before kahit pa paano nakokontrol natin pero ngayon dahil lutong bahay ang sarap kumain tama at the same time marami po ang hindi nakasabay sa ating online class kasi bakit dati may makokopyahan ka dati may matatanungan ka dati may patsitsikahan ka na uy paano nga ba to ngayon you're on your own plus ang iingay pa ng aso ng kapitbahay nyo plus meron pang problema sa pamilya ba diba? mainit ang ulo ni nanay at tatay dahil walang ayuda Okay? Nawalan ng trabaho. Ikaw mismo, uh, student, no? Um, tinatabunan ka ng tinatabunan na modules. Lalo na kayo, accounting, tama ba? Iba yung, alam mo yun, iba yung, <laughs> iba yung, ano eh, yung feels talaga, yung seriousness nyo to really um, pass your exams because every one of us wanted to achieve something. Tama ba? Meron tayong mga goals. Pero dahil nagkaroon tayo ng ganitong klaseng setup, Nala, nawala lahat ng goals. Tama ba? Nahirapan tayo bumangon, hindi na tayo excited, punta na lang tayo sa klase, pero sa totoo lang wala na tayo na intinan. So, paano naman natin ito ma-overcome? Okay? Number one, makinig ka mabuti. Okay? Um, andiyan ka pa ba? Uh, Lerina. Ayan, si Lerina, si Mika. Hello, Mika. Number one, adjust your expectations. Sabi ko nga sa inyo mga students, we need to have this kind of, alam mo yun, um, strategy na alam mo namang hindi na mawawala ang pandemya. At alam mo magtatagal pa ito, hindi pa natin alam kung kailan ito mawawala. So adjust your expectations. Ayusin natin, no? Kung halimbawa, nagkakaroon ka ng problema sa klase mo, adjust your expectation na yung prop mo hindi lagi masipag to teach you. Kaya kailangan mo mag-extra mile talaga. At hindi lang po kayo ang may problema. Hindi nyo lang alam, may mga professors tayo na minimit pa rin tayo mga students kahit wala na po silang sahod. May internal conflict din sa kanilang university, tama ba? So, maraming marami factors kung bakit yung professor mo biglang tamad na, yung professors mo hindi na nagtuturo, bigla ka na lang papanoorin ng kung ano-ano, tapos bibigyan ka na lang ng module. So, adjust your expectation. Hindi pwede nating laging isisi kay prop. Okay? Kung bakit ka nag-fail. 
you have to, alam mo yun, remind yourself students so you have a part sa ating ano, new set up. Kailangan mo talaga mag-aral. Kailangan natin mag-extra mile kasi bakit? Nag-enroll ka eh. Alam niyo, sabi ko sa mga youth ko last time, kasi syempre, sabi ko nga sa inyo, coach, si Coach Clay, uh, si Coach Clay ay nag-overseas sa Mandaluyong San Juan. So mga taga Mandaluyong San Juan yung campuses na hawak ko. And there was a time na kinausap ko lahat ng students na, oh, kamusta na kayo mga anak? Uh, kamusta yung, ano, yung school nyo? And marami doon, ma- kwentuhan na talagang, nay, pagod na kami. As in talaga, may youth ako na, hindi talaga siya umiiyak, napakajali nitong youth ng physical na nag mimit kami. Pero humagulgul talaga siya sa akin. Sabi niya, na, hindi ko na talaga kaya. And I realized, sabi ko na, we need to really adjust our expectation. Hindi pwede laging nating isisise sa iba. Okay? Isisise sa prop, isisise sa sa pandemic, isisise sa internet, isisise sa uh, family issues natin yung, alam mo yon yung reason kung bakit tayo nag-fail or kung bakit tayo nawawala ng gana mag-aral. You really need to to do something about it. Number two, set tasks and goals appropriate to pandemic. Okay? Paano po ito, Coach Clark? Ibig sabihin, pag sinabi natin set tasks and goals to na appropriate sa ating uh, setup ngayon, um, talagang i-ready mo na. Okay? Siyempre, magsiset up ka. Hindi pwedeng kung kailan online class, saka ka pala maghahabol na hanapin mo yung earphones mo. Uh, biglang maa-out ka sa klase kasi alam mo yon lobat ka. Okay, wala kang, wala kang plano kung kailan mo tatapusin. Kung kailan kinabukasan na yung deadline, magpupuyat ka. Okay, students ha, eto may sinabihan din akong youth na naiinis talaga ako. Sabi ko, mga anak, alam ko naman na G na G kayo. Ayaw naman natin talaga ng failing grades. etong mga students na to ay top din sa kanilang school. So sabi ko, okay yan, nagtatap kayo. I'm proud of you all. But then again, prioritize your health. Prioritize your routines because uh, your routines determines your result, mga students. Kung lagi po tayong puyat, hindi po yan worth it. Kasi bakit? Sa sobrang kakapuyat mo, matapos lahat ng modules mo, hindi naman talaga matatapos lahat yan. Tama ba? Kasi kinabukasan, may additional na naman. E kung pito pa yung prop mo, lima yung prop mo, ba? Diba? Tapos lahat sila, nagkakaisa na magbagsak lang sa'yo ng module, asan ka na? O, pa-thumbs up, yung mga nakaka-relate dyan, Coach Clark, tama yan. Okay? So, let's set our goals kung kailan mo tatapusin. Hindi yung um, gigising ka ng 6 a.m. tapos natutulog ka ng 4 a.m. 2 hours lang tulog mo tapos hindi ka pakakain. Nagpapalipas pa tayo ng gutom. O, oh, drink your water, B. <laughs> Sino dyan ang um, ano, guilty na hindi na umiinom ng tubig. So, sana ngayon uminom ka na ng tubig. Number three, okay, importante din to. Avoid or lessen your time in social media and watching news. Bakit sinama natin yung watching news? Kasi alam naman natin talaga na medyo, ano mo yun, nagigigi ka talaga sa mga balita ngayon. You, you need to really aware, be aware. Pero wag na sana tayong ano, yung nakikisali sa toxic um, environment ng social media, nakadakita mo din, di ba, magpo-post ka, tapos magraran ka din sa social media, tapos uunahin pa ang TikTok, ayan, bato-bato, no, tamaan, wag magalit. Diba? Catch mo to. Okay? So, let's um, avoid spending so much time sa social media na hindi ka na talaga nagiging productive. Hindi ko naman sinabing, ano, um, wala kang uh, going break, no? Hindi naman kay JC Coach Clark, kailangan mo din naman yan, maglakad-lakad ka, diba? Magtanim-tanim ka din sa, sa ano nyo, sa bahay nyo. Pero, wag masyado na tatapusin mo yung buong series ng K-drama ng isang gabi lang. <laughs> Okay, wag naman po ganun, no? So ano naman, one episode a day naman kung may break ka. Pero wag naman yung buong araw, di ba? Natapos mo na yung ano, yung buong episode. O kaya sa anime, no? Natapos mo na yung buong uh, series ng anime. Hindi pala ano, hindi pala episode 5, season 5 ganun. <laughs> okay, so let's manage it. Number four, be active. Bakit sinama natin to sa power of five para magkaroon ng impact naman, magkaro- ma-overcome natin tong pandemic fatigue. Kasi yun naman yung isa sa mga nahinto sa atin. Okay? Kasi lahat tayo nakaupo na lang. ba? Diba? Hindi na tayo tumatayo. 
Lalo na kapag hindi ka naman naglalaba, hindi ka naman masyadong kumagalaw sa bahay, nasa loob ka lang ng kwarto mo, aral buong araw, di ba? Nirarasyonan ka na lang ng nanay mo, o nak, nakakain na, papasok ka na ng pagkain. Minsan, si Coach Clark, ganun eh, talagang supportive ni Mama, buti na lang. Pero alam mo, um, I realize we need to be active. Kahit pa paano, lakad ka muna, di ba? After, ako, after uh, a long talk, example, Mag, ano ako, magta-try ako na maglakad muna sa labas, makikialam ako ng mga halaman ni mama, ayan, di ba? At least, kahit pa paano, napapawisan tayo. Okay? So, try to be active. Hindi naman sobrang gina na talaga magbabarbel ka, no? Coach Clark, yan, be, let's be active. Hindi naman. Pero, yung simpleng walking outside, di ba? Um, konting ligpet, organize your things para at least, di ba, um, pleasant yung paligid natin, maayos tayo, ayusin mo yung mga gamit mo, yan, makakatulong yan. And lastly, focus on building relationship than just zooming around or um, being, uh, tawag nito, uh, a dormant viewer sa GMeet. Bakit to natin sinama? Because this is the reality, mga students, no, dahil online class tayo, um, Parang ano, mas lalong nagdo-double up. Alam mo yon yung tipong, syempre, sabi ko nga sa inyo kanina, sabi ni Coach Clark, kung hindi ka nakapag open cam, ibig sabihin nun, hindi ka prepared na magpakita. Syempre, kung hindi ka prepared na magpakita, ang tendency mo nun, masasanay ka na hindi ka na nagpapakita. So, hindi ka, nakaka- hindi ka nakiki-interact sa ibang tao, wala ka pang kinakausap sa family members mo, kasi hindi naman lahat pare-parehas ng family, tama ba? Yung ibang family, masaya, pero may mga family na talagang tahimik lang. Hindi masyado nag-uusap kahit nag-lockdown na, no? Um, magpapansinan lang pagkakain na, ganyan. So, the fact na online class na tayo, hindi ka pa nag-open cam, hindi ka pa nag-chat-chat dyan. Kung hindi ko ka makapag-open cam, hindi ka pa nag-chat-chat, hindi ka pa nag-re-react. Mahirapan ka talaga. Ang mangyayari sa'yo, um, puro ano ka na lang, screen time, alam mo yon Wala kang actual interaction. Yung mga dati mong kaibigan, ayaw mo na din kausapin, naka-deactivate ka, o kaya yung ibang mong account, naka-hide yung mga stories sa kanila. <laughs> Sino dyan yung gumagawa ng ganyan, o kaya mag- nag-live ka na sa mga GC. Parang wala nang sense makipag-usap sa iba. Please don't do that. But then again, try to, alam mo yon rekindle that relationship. Kamustahin mo naman yung mga relatives mo. Try mong mag, uh, makipag, uh, alam mo yon connect ulit sa mga friends mo. ba? Diba? At least, alam mo na, oh, hindi lang ako yung nahihirapan. Iba pa din kapag nakaka-relate ka. Alam mo yun, students, iba pa din kapag nararamdaman mo, oh, sila, ano din, nahihirapan din. Wala po dito niyan, coach. Oh, syempre naniniwala ako. Wala nang ganyan dito. Tama ba? So, mamaya hang- uh, hanggang sa ma-welcome natin speaker natin, magre-reply tayo. Alam mo yon magko-comment tayo, magtatanong tayo, susulitin natin yung online class na ito, tutorial na ito, itong time na i-spend natin sa bawat isa, no? Okay? And lastly, of course, ito ang quotable quotes na iiwanan sa'yo ni Coach Clar. If you don't want what you're seeing, do something about it. Ulitin ko ha, if you don't want what you're seeing, do something about it. Kung feeling mo, um, hindi ka na nag-grow during this pandemic, kung feeling mo, wala na naman tayong goals, kung feeling mo, tenga ka na naman, di ba? You're isolating yourself from others, nalulungkot tayo, do something about it. Kasi sayang yung buong 2021 mo kung ibibigay mo na naman yan kay COVID-19. Yung 2020 nga namin, natin, na-shock na tayo, tama ba? Sobrang ano na tayo, nahirapan na tayo. Hindi na natin na-enjoy yung bawat araw na binibigay sa atin na blessing, na buhay ka pa. Buti nga ikaw, buhay ka pa. Tama ba? Buti nga tayo, may nakakain pa tayo sa ating hapagkainan. Maraming students ang wala pong ganyang privilege katulad mo na talagang kailangan pang magpa-load, kailangan pang umakit ng bubong para lang makapag-online class. Kailangan pang, ano mo yun, um, magpahatid ng modules kasi wala po silang internet, wala silang signal. So I hope you you nourish, alam mo, you appreciate everything that you have. And if you don't want what you're seeing, do something about it. It takes five seconds lang, students, to make that decision, to change your routine and change your result. So maraming maraming salamat for this privilege. Again, this is Coach Clar. I hope every one of you ay na-encourage. Uh, stay safe, stay hy- hydrated, and um, galingan nyo pa mga students. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you po.
Thank you po sa pag-share po ng knowledge ninyo. And I just want to um, emphasize lang po na yung pandemic fatigue nga po is exhaustion po. And to overcome this, this po, adjust expectation, set up goals, lessen your time in social media and watching news, be active, focus on building relationship than just zooming around. Totoo naman po, um, personally, nababad po ako sa mga social media, but Siyempre po, tayong estudyante, kailangan po natin ng priorities kasi po nag-aaral po tayo ng mabuti para po ma-achieve yung success po natin. Then if you don't want what you are seeing, do something about it. Siyempre po, of course, wala pong mababago sa isang bagay kung hindi po natin yung diagalawin. Yun lang po. And... Yes, thank you po sa ating speaker, Ms. Clarissa Isabel Reyes. Uh, yun nga po, naka-inspire po yung sinabi niyo kasi ngayon nga pong nasa kalagitnaan tayo ng pandemic, eh, ang dami nga po nating na-encounter na challenges. So it's in the matter of how we deal with it lang po at paano po natin, ano po yung mga gagawin nating ways and steps to surpass this trial po. And before we continue po, please open lang po yung mga cam natin. Yes po. Re-request lang po natin yung mga participants po natin to open their cameras po para po may picture taking po tayo. Para may remembrance. Okay, open na lang po ng cam natin. Okay na po. Ayan. Yung iba po, uh, paki-open na lang din po yung cam natin. Okay na po. Yun lang po yung mag-open ng camera. <laughs> Ayan po. Okay na po. Uh, in 3, 2, 1 po. Sabihin po natin CPA ha. In 3, 2, 1. Say CPA. CPA. Ayan. Isa pa po. 1, 2, 3. CPA. Ayan. Okay po. Thank you po. And kung okay na po, pwede nyo na po silang i-off. Then now, we are moving to our next guest speaker. She's a former audit supervisor, former audit assistant manager, former audit associate, former financial reporting assistant manager, and passed the 2014 Philippine CPA licensure examination and rank 18. Let's welcome Ms. CNM Cruz. Hi guys. <coughs> Hi po. Rinig ko ba ako maayos? Rinig ko ba ako maayos? Yes po. Okay po yung audio. Okay, so thank you Evangeline and Vanessa uh, for welcoming me for the warm welcome. And I would like to say hello again to Don Honorio's uh, Ventura State University. So this is the second time that you have invited me and this is the continuation of our previous topic in intermediate accounting. So first of all, I just want to encourage everyone to really be present at the moment. So katulad nga ng sinabi ni Coach Clar, di ba? Parang we have to be ready. Even in this uh, discussion that we will have, I want you guys to be ready with your mind, with your notes. And let's not waste the... Let's not waste the two and a half hours that we have more. So let's use this time to learn more about the subject you're studying. So alam ko, accountancy students kayo. Some of you are all only first years and some of you might be in other year levels. So probably yung iba sa inyo medyo, uh, medyo baguhan pa dito sa topic na to for the intermediate accounting. And probably some of you na encounter na tong topic na to. So let's just uh, do this discussion. Let's just do this discussion. Uh, for everyone, let's do it in a step-by-step, step, yung tipong maiintindihan ng lahat. And uh, let's not prolong the wait and let us start since we have limited time to discuss uh, uh, actually quite a, quite a lot of topic today. So, let me share my screen for a while. Okay, so once again, uh, welcome everyone. Uh, I hope you will be able to learn from this topic and we will be discussing about uh, Intermediate Accounting 2, about provision, notes, bonds payable, and shareholders' equity. 
So, just to give a bit of a background about myself, so katulad nga ng sinabi ng ating mga host today, I am currently a financial reporting uh, assistant manager in Arms Corps. And uh, currently, since I am in a financial reporting, uh, I do the financial reports of the company, of the company of the subsidiaries both here in the Philippines and the United States. And uh, actually, yung mga i-discuss natin ngayon, this is part of the job na ginagawa ko. And I know that once you become CPA, this will also be the functions that you'll be doing as a CPA. So, I hope na may matutunan kayo sa lesson na ito. I just want your full attention. And if you have, uh, so mamaya na tayo mag-phone. If you're using your phone other than for this um, Google Meet, then later na tayo mag-social media. And let's just... Uh, Let's just commit this time so we can learn a new thing about accounting. So, our discussion outline for the day will be about the provisions, notes and bonds, and shareholders' equity. So, take note, itong tatlong topic na to actually, kapag inaral mo siya, di ba, sa school and what, or sa college, actually, yung buong intermediate accounting 2 is discussed for a whole semester. And in this topic, we will be discussing three subjects in the intermediate accounting within the span of two and a half hours. So, since we have limited time, I will just discuss to you kung ano yung pinaka-importante na dapat yung malaman about these topics and yung ano yung usually na na-encounter natin when we talk about the provisions or the bonds or the notes or the shareholders' equity. So, for the shareholders' equity, uh, we'll just discuss the very basic for it. But we'll focus more on the provisions and the notes and bonds. And maybe on another session, we can discuss more about the shareholders' equity. Kasi sobrang daming laman ng shareholders' equity. So for now, uh, we will be discussing about the definition and nature of liabilities, the recognition of liabilities, uh, what are provisions versus contingent liabilities, and the measurement of liabilities and provision. So for the notes and bonds, we will be discuss discussing how to account for this and also about non-current liabilities. And for the shareholders' equity, as I said, we'll be discussing just the basic, and we will be discussing about the nature of the shareholders' equity and how do we present it in the financial statements and the authorized issued and outstanding shares. So, kung medyo, um, kung hindi nyo pala encountered ang topic na to before, so, uh, medyo, pe, pwedeng me, medyo malito kayo. So, let's try our best na makasunod and I will explain it the best that I can. And, um, and ready your calculators because we will be having some calculation examples. So, if you have your notes, pwede din, but I will be, I will be giving the material to you later. So, for the provision, let's start. So, ano yung provision? So, from the word itself, it is a provision, provide, provide for something, provide for a contingency, provide for a liability. So, what is a liability? So, the, the IASB's conceptual framework for financial reporting, the one we use in our uh, financial statements, defines liability as a present obligation of an enterprise arising from past events the settlement of which is expected to result in an outflow from the enterprise of resources embodying economic benefits. So, when we say liability, mapa sole proprietorship, command, partnership, or corporation, pwede kang magkaroon ng utang. In the most basic sense of it is utang, di ba? Even in our personal finances, we have utang minsan. So, even for a company, uh, a company is, of course, it's very uh, common for a company to have a liability. And para ma-define natin siya as a liability for a, from a company standpoint, we have to take note of the essential characteristics. So if, it, if this is not present, then hindi natin siya masasabi na liability. So this is essential. It is a necessity para masabi mo na liability siya. So first is present obligation. So, obligation is a duty or responsibility to act or perform in a certain way which may be legally enforceable as a consequence of a binding contract or statutory requirement or acknowledged by an enterprise because the other parties are made to believe that it will carry out an undertaking or a certain of action. So, uh, in the most basic sense of its word, it's obligation. You are obliged. Uh, it is your duty. It is your responsibility to pay this liability. So, kung wala kang obligation to pay anything, then it's not a liability because you don't have any obligation. 
So you have to have a present obligation. So for the past event, it should have been an event in the past. So these liabilities are only ar arise only from past events or transactions. So in, in a simple way to discuss, for example, meron tayong hinare na employee. Of course, these employees, uh, babayarin natin sila ng salaries. Pero once na hinare ba natin sila, once we hire them, meron na ba agad tayo na liability to pay them salaries? Yes or no? So, of course, kapag hire pa lang natin ng ating mga employees, not necessarily agad na meron tayong liabilities. It should be from past events or transactions. So, once these employees render their services for our company, ginawa na nila kung, pa, kung bakit sila, natin sila hinar, then that will be the only time na meron na tayong liability kasi meron ng past event na nangyari. Nag-render na sila ng service nila. So remember, for it to be a liability, you have to have a present obligation and it should be or it should arise from a past event or a transaction. So what is probable outflow? So the settlement of a present obligation involves the enterprise giving up resources. So any resources, it could be cash, it could be inventories, receivables, so uh, whatever resources it might be that embodies economic benefits in order to satisfy the claim of the party. So mar maraming klase yan. It could be payment of cash, transfer of other assets, provision of services, replacement of an obligation, or con conversion of obligation to equity. So uh, if you have these three essential characteristics, then you can define a liability as a liability under the IASB's conceptual framework for financial reporting. So once na ma-establish na natin yung tatlong to, then pwede na tayong mag-record ng liability. So what is a liability? Kailangan, uh, okay, uh, additional pala for the obligations, remember our three essential characteristics, uh, the obligation or the obligating event could result from two different things. Una una is yung legal obligation. This is the usual. This is the usual obligation that we have. So for legal obligation, we derive it from a contract, legislation, or other operation of law. So when we say uh, legal obligation, ito yung normal na kung saan nag-aaray yung liability. For example, meron tayong supplier na kukuha ng goods for benta. So since we have a contract between the two of us, then we have a legal obligation. Pero meron din tayong sinasabi na constructive obligation. So what is constructive obligation? When we say constructive obligation, it is uh, derives from an enterprise actions whereby an established pattern of past practice, published policies, or a sufficiently specific current statement, the enterprise has indicated... So, in indicate, pero not necessarily merong formal contract. So, the enterprise has indicated that it will accept certain responsibilities and has created a valid expectation on the part of the parties. So, for example, provision of cleanup costs, where the enterprise has a widely published policy of cleaning up all contamination that it causes. So, constructive obligation, basically, ano lang siya, um, you have an obligation not necessarily because of law, not necessarily because of contract, or other operation of law or legislation, like merong pinasang batas, kailangan mo magbayad. So, hindi siya ganun. Constructive obligation, it's derived lang dahil kilala ka sa company mo na ginagawa mo yun in the past or probably nagbigay ka ng statement that you will do it without any contract being, uh, without any contract binding you. So, it can be a constructive obligation. So, for in this example, halimbawa, uh, meron ka company tapos nag, um, syempre nag, cost kayo ng contamination. Ngayon, you gave in a statement na, okay, we will clean up this uh, contamination that we cause. So, pag ganun pa lang, even without the contract, then it could be an obligation already. So, masasabi na natin meron kang obligation. So, it is important uh, to know if meron, so this will help you in knowing if you really have a present obligation. So remember, it can only be a liability if you have a present obligation. And these two are the types of sources that we could check 
if they want to know if the company have a um, present obligation. Okay. So, for the recognition of liabilities, so, ito na nga, para saan ba yung pinag-aaralan natin? Of course, uh, once we know what the liabilities are, once we know how to measure the liabilities, then we have to know when to record and report in the statement of financial position. So, of course, financial statement, uh, the statement of financial position is the one that you do after all the accounting is done at year and you do the financial statements. Actually, ito yung output mo as a CPA so that you can report on the company's um, financial standing and financial performance. So, once we know na meron kang liability, paano naman natin manalaman kung kailan natin siya dapat i-record at i-report sa financial statement? So, first of all, if it is probable that an outflow of resources embodying economic benefits will result from the settlement of a present obligation, so, if it is probable to occur, di ba? Sinabi na natin, meron tayong outflow of resources. Pero, is it really probable to occur? Pwede nga bang magkakaroon ka talaga ng payment o baka naman haka-haka lang or baka-baka lang naman yan. So, it is probable when it is most likely to occur than not to occur. So, more than 50% probability of occurrence or sometimes we use the health the help of independent experts so they can say to us now okay you have to record this amount because you have a probable outflow of resources you possibly have to pay cash amounting to five million or ten million or whatsoever so when it is probable that an outflow of resources uh, might happen then you can record it at the financial statement if the second criteria if you can also meet the second criteria so the second one is the amount at which the settlement will take place can be measured reliably. Simple lang, kaya mo ba siyang measure in financial terms, in financial figures, reliably? Hindi pwedeng hula lang. You have to measure it reliably. So, kasi ilalagay mo sa financial statements mo. And of course, your financial statement should be reliable. So, pwede ka namang mag-use ng estimates. Pero of course, hindi ito nang basta hulaan mo lang na, ay sige, baka 5 million yung babayaran natin. 5 million na lang lagay mo. So, of course, you have, you can use uh, reasonable estimates. So, syempre, dapat may pinagkuhanan ka nung estimates mo. So, hindi naman na undermine yung reliability ng financial statements mo kapag gumagamit ka ng estimates because almost all FS uses management's estimate. But of course, these are informed informed estimate. So, hindi siya hula-hula lang, pero estimate na pinag-aralan, kinumplit ng maayos, and possibly kinonsult sa mga mas nakakaalam or sa mga experts regarding this uh, measurements or this uh, aspects, these things, this matter. So, the uncertainty of the timing and or amount of obligation that must, does not disqualify for recognition of liabilities. These liabilities which are uncertain as to timing or amounts are otherwise known as provisions. So, when we say it is probable and it can be measured reliably, then we, could, we can record it in the statement of financial position. Pero minsan, di ba nga, meron tayong uncertainty kung yung timing. Kailan ba natin ito babayaran? So, even may uncertainty, kailan mo, yung, kailan mo siya babayaran as long as alam mo that it is probable na babayaran mo siya and as long na present talaga yung obligation, then you have no problem if, if, even if you are uncertain as to timing. And for the amount, even if you are uncertain, probably nag-estimate ka lang pero hindi pa talaga yun yung pinakatumpak na babayaran mo, then it doesn't matter. Kaya pero tayong tinatawag na provisions. Okay, so when we say provisions, meaning it is uncertain as to timing, hindi natin alam kailan natin babayaran, and as to the amount of the obligation. Hindi pa natin sure magkano yung exact na babayaran, but we know for sure na it is a present obligation and it is probable na babayaran natin siya. Hindi lang natin alam kung kailan, hindi lang natin alam yung exact amount, pero we have an estimate we can measure it reliably and it is probable that we really would have an outflow of resources. Okay, so when we say um, for the obligations involving uncertainties, 
we have uh, already discussed provisions, but we also have contingent liability. So, ito nga, kapag meron tayong uncertainty as to timing and as to amount, dito na pumapasok yung provisions and contingent liability. So, actually, for the current liabilities, isa lang naman to sa isang, I think, special topic na you really, ha you really have to master or to study kasi the other payables or the other liabilities, hindi naman siya ganun ka hirap. Straightforward lang siya. For example, accounts payable. So, it's very straightforward na pag bumili ka, on account, then may utang ka. So, dito kasi, yung challenge lang dito is we have to determine kung meron nga bang provisions, kung meron nga bang liability, or baka hindi naman dapat natin siya i-record. So, in this case, we will compare how provision and contingent liability is different from the other. So, when we say provision, it is a liability of uncertain timing or amount, but the existence is certain. So as we said, sure ka na magbabayad ka. At sure kang may babayaran ka, na-estimate mo siya, hindi mo lang alam kung sobrang exact yun sa babayaran mo. So nag-estimate ka lang. Pero yung existence is certain. So definitely, provision is a liability. Okay? It is a liability. You record it as a liability because you have you can measure it reliably or you can use an estimate and you are certain na magbabayad ka nito hindi mo lang alam kailan hindi mo lang alam ang exact to the cents value when we say naman contingent liability it is a possible obligation so ibig sabihin hindi ka pa sobrang sure kung meron ka talagang obligation it's the existence is not certain so, a possible obligation that arises from past events and existence will be confirmed only by the occurrence or non-occurrence of one or more future events not wholly within the control of the enterprise. Or, a present obligation, so, possible obligation, depende pa kung may mangyari, for example, halimbawa, mm, meron kang possible obligation, pero ang... Pero masusure mo lang kung babayaran mo, mo yun kapag may nangyaring ganito. Halimbawa, napasa yung law. So, pag napasa pala yung law na yun, may possible obligation ka. <coughs> so, it's only a possible obligation, pero hindi ka pa sure. Kasi depende pa kung napasa dun yung batas. So, kung hindi napasa yung batas, edi wala ka obligation. So, pag napasa, meron ka obligation. So, ganito yung mga example na possible obligation. So, depende pa kung mag occur or may non or depending pa sa occurrence or non occurrence of certain events in the future whether in the man that it is a present obligation that arises from past events pero you cannot recognize because number 1 it is not probable that an outflow of that an outflow embodying economic benefits will be required to settle the obligation so, the amount of the obligation cannot be measured reliably. So, remember sa provisions. Di ba yung binigay natin sample sa provision? Di ba yung binigay natin sample or definition sa provision? It is probable, number one. It's, and secondly, we can measure it reliably even with the use of estimates. So, for this, kapag not probable or the obligation or the amount of obligation cannot be measured reliably, hindi siya papasok sa provision. Kasi nga, hindi na meet yung dalawang criteria. So, kapag ganitong, um, pag ganitong uh, case, then it will just be a contingent liability. It is not a liability per se that you record in your book, that you report in your financial statements, kasi nga, it's not certain as with the existence. Because probably it's not probable that an outflow of uh, that an outflow will happen or hindi ka pa sure kasi possible obligation pala siya. So, kaibahan lang nitong dalawa to be, uh, to be simple, to be basic is really just the existence. Kapag sure ka sa existence ng liability, then it's a provision. Pag hindi ka sure, hindi, pwedeng hindi matuloy, then it's just a contingent liability. So, how do we recognize for the provisions we recognize as a liability on the face of statement of financial position, as I said. And the second, the contingent liability is not recognized as a liability. Wala ka record na amount or whatsoever. But, and liability on the face of statement of financial position. So, dun sa FS mo, hindi siya makikita. 
pero ang provisions nakalagay. Pero, ipepresent mo si contingent liability. So, sa provision, presented separately in the statement of financial position, may sarili siyang linya, pero for contingent liability, unless remote, unless remote, disclosed in the notes of the financial statement. So, ibig sabihin, sa notes lang siya lalabas. Hindi siya dun sa face. Hindi naka-record yung amount sa books. Hindi naka-record yung amount dun sa magre-reflect sa financial statements. Kapag pumunta ka sa baba, dun lang sa mga notes, kung baga may nakalagay lang dun na there is a contingent liability amounting to 1 million, but it is not, or but uh, or it is dependent on the occurrence of this or that. So, it's just a disclosure. Kung baga kwento-kwento ka lang dun na, okay, may contingent liability tayo, pero hindi pa sure, nababayaran. Pero ito yung amount niya, if ever bayaran, or hindi natin ma this or hindi natin ma laman kung ano yung amount niya talaga. So it depends kung ano yung case on hand. So yun yung difference na lang dalawa. And to be more um, to give you more illustration, uh, this could be you can use this to determine if meron bang um, or of ano ba ang gagawin natin sa mga liabilities. So, later, we have illustrations and you have, later we have illustrations and uh, I, I'm asking you guys to participate para naman meron kayong participation and we can make sure na naiintindahan nyo talaga yung mga pinagdadadal ko dito, ba? So, you can use this, you can take a screenshot or what, you can use this later on when we do the exercises. So, ito yung pwede yung maging basis about the liability. So, for example, you have a case. You have a case on for the illustration, di ba? So, una mo munang tanong, is it probable? If it is probable, di ba? Naalala nyo yung definition natin ng provisions. If it can be reliably measured, then, ano siya? It is a provision. So, record it by debiting an expense or a loss and crediting a liability. So, you have to credit your liability, increase in liability. So, what naman, if probable siya, but it's not, it's not reliably measurable. So, saan nga siya mag-fall? Doon siya kay contingent liability. So, only disclose in the notes to financial statement. So, ibig sabihin, hindi natin siya i-record yung amount niya per books. Ikakwento lang natin sa FS na meron kang contingent liability. So, what if it is reasonably possible but not yet probable? Posible pa lang. Pero di ba, pag posible naman, pwedeng hindi. So, contingent liability din siya. Pasok siya kay disclose in the notes to the financial statements. Ngayon, paano naman yung remote? So, remote talagang malayo siyang mangyari. May maliit na chance na mangyari siya, pero malayo o malabo siya mangyari. So, kapag may remote, anong gagawin natin? Ignore <laughs> or neither recognize nor disclose. So, hiyaan lang natin siya. If it is really remote or malayo yung posibilidad na mangyari siya. Okay? So, when we measure the liabilities, of course, number one is that amount established in exchange. So, this is for all liabilities, okay? When we say... Uh, Kung ano yung in-exchange natin, halimbawa, bumili tayong inventory or equipment or land or building. So, kung magkano yung amounts at exchange, yun yung ating liability. So, it's very straightforward. Ngayon kay provision, meron lang tayong ilang exception. So, number two, we can also buy as measure liabilities by estimates of a definitive character when the amount of the liability cannot be measured more precisely. So, this is for the provisions and we will discuss this uh, much more in detail. Okay, so, measurement of provisions. So, for the measurement of provisions, the best estimate, so, ito, um, di ba, kapag sa liability is very straightforward lang, kung ano lang yung amounts established at exchange. Pero pagdating kay provisions, marami tayong pwedeng gamitin na way para malaman kung magkano dapat yung provisions. Okay, so, um, so, take a look at this. Focus on me. We can use the best estimate for the provision. So, best estimate of the expenditure required to settle the obligation at the end of the reporting period considering, ito yung mga pwede nating gamitin sources, judgment of management, 
experience from similar transactions, reports from independent experts. So, let's have an example para mas maging concrete sa inyo yung, yung iniisip natin, no? So, halimbawa, you're a cosmetic company, for example. And then, nagkaroon ng sue against your company kasi, halimbawa, may gumamit and then nabaga, namaga yung mukha nila and everything, di ba? So, it is, you uh, may nagsue sa company mo. So, it depends, di ba? Pag sinabi ng um, pag sinabi ng lawyer mo na it is probable that you will have to pay for this lawsuit, uh, for the lawsuit against you, then number one, probable ka na. Pasok ka na sa unang criteria. Ngayon, you can have, uh, ngayon, you have to check the obligation back and be measured reliably. So, yun pala, last year pala, meron, mamaya last year, mamaya last year pala, meron kang ano, um, Last year pala, meron kang same lawsuit. So, you can, so from there, meron ka ng idea how much yung possible mong um, uh, settlement. So, it could be measured reliably or maybe the lawyers that you have can, measure, can, can give you an estimate for the settlement. So, pasok ka na sa number two. So, you will record it as a provision. And what amount should you record? So, ano yung best estimate galing dun sa mga independent experts or kaya sa lawyers? Or pwede rin namang judgment from you or experience from similar transactions since nangyari na siya before. Then pwede kang mag-base doon how, how much can be our settlement for day, for this uh, for this case, di ba? So, always the best estimate pa rin pag -even. The best estimate, okay? So, kapag halimbawa naman, if it's just a single obligation that is being measured, the amount to be recognized as a liability is the most likely outcome for that single obligation. Kung isa lang naman pinag-uusapan natin, so kung ano yung most likely outcome, then doon natin siya i-record. Kasi meron ding mga chances, like for this number two in this slide, for the second bullet, di ba? When invo involving a large population of items, the obligation is estimated by weighting all possible outcomes by their associated possibilities. So, dito, kapag maraming, ang dami mo namang lawsuit kapag ganito, di ba? Pero halimbawa, marami kang lawsuit or marami kang, um, you know, uh, provisions, hindi lang naman lawsuit. So, for example, um, pwede halimbawa, katulad ng mga warranties, ganyan. Halimbawa, warranty, di ba, nagbenta ka ng product. For example, computer. So, in the first year, uh, three years warranty, for example. So, alam mo yun, you can also set a provision for it because upon your sale of the product, there is a probable warranty expense. There is a probable outflow kasi possible na masira yung mga kagamitan mo. Kasi it's warranty eh, di ba? Ngayon, it could also be like warranty provision. So, pag ganun, at kapag sobrang dami na, we can use this expected value. So, na, um, so this one, nang uh, kumbaga na napag-aralan natin to sa statistics. So the statistical method of expected value based sa mga probabilities nila. So later on we'll have an example on this para mas maliwanag. So kapag ganon halimbawa, um wala kang halimbawa sa range of possible na pabayaran mo, wala kang masabi doon na pag wala kang masabi doon na for example, on a continuous range of possible outcomes, and each point in the range is likely as any other. Kung baga wala kang masabi na ito talaga yung babayaran mo, wala kang masabi dun as best estimate na ito yung babayaran natin. So, you can just use the midpoint. Or, if a given naman halimbawa na yung probability ng ganitong outcome is 50%, yung probability ng ganitong outcome is 20%. So, it depends. Then, you will use the expected value. It depends on the situation. And later on, we'll have illustrations for this. Okay, so for the measurement of provisions, uh, where the effect of this is another two, um, another two special measurement for provisions. So where the effect of the time value of money is material, the amount of pro provisions should be the present value of the expenditures expected to be required to settle the obligation. So of course, as we have discussed about the present value before the um. Possible na, halimbawa, five years magpababayaran tong provision na to. And, of course, meron tayong time value of money. Kasi nga, nag-i-inflate yan. Nagkakanta inflation. So, pagdating ng five years, yung one, 
let's say yung 500,000 mo ngayon, maliit na yun pagdating after 5 years, di ba? So, kapag significant yung effect or material yung effect nung time value of money or yung inflation, then you have, we have to record the present value of the obligation, not the amount to be settled 5 years from, from now, but the present value. So, lastly, if expected to be reimbursed by another party, so, for example, sa ating cosmetic company, um, meron ka palang ibang supplier na pinagkuhanan, no raw materials po for that, and then you, you sue them, and then you have you have agreed na i-reimburse -re nila yung settlement mo. So, ito yon being reimbursed by another party. So, the reimbursement should be recognized when and only when it is virtually certain that reimbursement will be received received if the enterprise settles the obligation so the reimbursement if virtually certain should be treated as a separate asset so kailangan virtually certain lang siya uh, kailangan virtually certain siya before you can record it in your books pero hindi siya kabawasan sa liability hiwalay siya as a separate asset so now for our um, illustrations i want everyone to Try and solve this on your own, okay? And then, and then you can send sa chat natin, ha? Huh? So, try nyo lang. You can chat it. So, kung ano yung sa tingin yung sagot. Based sa mga diniscuss natin, when to recognize, and how much to recognize in a provision. So, let's have this first illustration. For our case one, so in September 2020, Kobe filed a suit against Babel Company, so alleging violation of patent rights and it is seeking payment for damages of seven million. Ngayon, Babel disclaims the charges and the legal counsel advises that as of the date of the issuance of Babel Company's financial statements, it is probable that the enterprise will not be found liable. So, should we record a provision or should we not? So, please answer. So, ano sa tingin niyo, guys? Please try to answer. Should we record a provision or should we not? So, it is probable though that the enterprise will not will not be found liable. So, anyone? May kausap pa ba ako, guys? Come on, just say yes or no if you think we should record a provision or not. So, Anna May, Angeline, Clarissa, Diana, Eliza, Erica, Evangeline, Kimberly, Larina, Lowen, Mika, Neil, Sheila, Vanessa, ano sa tingin ninyo? Yes or no? Meron bang react button dito? Like, kung sa tingin niya yes, give me a like. So, wala ata. It's just for Zoom probably. Or Skype. Ano? Wala tayong ano? Ano sa tingin niyo? Should we record a provision or not? Should we record a provision or should we not? Okay, ano? Anong sagot? Wala kayong hula? Hula lang. Walang masama mang hula. Basta wag sa CPA board exam. <laughs> so, discussion lang to. Okay lang. We can discuss why yes, we can discuss why no. So, si Eliza lang at si Sheila ang sasagot. Si Eliza lang ba siya si Sheila kausap ko? Anna May, thank you rin sa pagsagot. Wala na, wala nang pahabol. Okay, Diana, thank you rin sa pagsagot. Erica, thank you sa pagsagot. 
Ayan, thank you guys for replying. May kausap pa pala ako. So, merong nagsasabi ng yes, merong nagsasabi ng no. Okay. Tay tayo, ha. Merong tatlong yes, merong tatlong no. Merong pang hahabol? Wala na. Okay. So, balik tayo sa ating question, no? Basahin natin. So, in September 2020 daw, Hubi filed a sweet suit against Bubble Company. Uh, demanding 7 million for patent rights daw, violation of patent rights. Ngayon, Babel disclaims the charges and sabi ng legal counsel nila kay Babel na it is probable that the enterprise will not be found liable. So, medyo siguro malilito ka lang kasi makikita mo yung probable, di ba? Kasi nga, based sa discussion natin, when it is probable, it could be reliably measured, then it could be, uh, then it would be a provision. So, for this example, no provision is recognized because based on the evidence available as of FS date, when I say FS, uh, financial statements, there is no obligation as a result of past events. This is disclosed as, as a contingent liability unless the probability of any auto is regarded as remote. So, sabi kasi sa problem natin, probable na hindi ka ma-found liable. Ibig sabihin, uh, you paying an obligation is not probable. So for this example, we will just uh, disclose a contingent liability in our financial statements. Okay? So my questions ba? If you have any questions, you can uh, put it in the chat box so para masagot natin ang any questions niyo or if may nagbubuluhan kayo or nagbubulumihanan kayo, then just put it here. So for our next illustration, let's go for uh, ABC company operates in a city where there is no environmental legislation, okay? However, the company has a wild has a widely published policy in which it undertakes to clean up all contamination it causes. So meron silang policy. Papasok to dun sa constructive obligation. Na kapag meron dun silang mga contamination na nakakos, then they undertake to clean it up. So as of the date of issuance of its 2020 FS, a reasonable estimate of the cost of this cleanup related to 2020 operations is 2 million. So, sinabi na dito, since meron tayong constructive obligation, then meron na tayong present obligation, we have a past event, and it is probable we have, um, we can measure, uh, we, can, we can reliably measure the amount of our obligation. So, sabi dito, meron tayong reasonable estimate. Diba? Hindi siya haka-haka lang or hula-hula lang na estimate. But we have a reasonable estimate na yung cost will be 2 million pesos. So, based dito sa ating given, we are sure that we are sure to record a provision. Okay? So, of course, we should recognize a provision. We have to debit an expense account, kung anong expense man yung ginagamit nyo sa company, and then credit a provision for cleanup. So, itong provision for cleanup, this is a liability account. Okay? So, it's very easy, it's very straightforward because we know that... It, Present obligation is probable. We have a present obligation because of the constructive obligation or constructive obligating event. And we can measure it reliably. So, given kasi yung 2 million, so we have to set up and record a provision or a liability. So, it's very easy. Debit expense or loss and credit the liability account of 2 million. So, malinaw ba? Okay, so far, wala namang questions. And now, for the third illustration, for our case number three, illustration. So, as a result of an uninsured accident, so, wala kang insurance dito, Besh. So, as a, a result of an uninsured accident during the year 2020, personal injury suit for 3 million has been filed against Borahe Company. So it is the judgment of the company's legal counsel. So it is the judgment of the company's legal counsel so that an unfavorable verdict. So based those sa lawyers natin, um, possible na magkaroon ka ng unfavorable verdict, unfavorable sa yo. So ibig sabihin magbabayad ka ng 
probable ka magbayad ng liabilities. So, uh, that an unfavorable verdict will result in a loss ranging from 1.8 million to 2.8 million. So the lawyer believes that the most reasonable estimate is 2 million and 2 million 200 or 2.2 million. So ano sagot natin dito? So sabi nila probable na magbabayad ka, okay? So sure na yon, magbabayad ka cost probable na unfavorable yung verdict. And then, you can measure it reliably kasi may mga binigay siyang range. So, sa tingin nyo, alin dito yung gagamitin ng nating amount to record the liability. So, may tatlo siyang amount na binigay, okay? Merong na, uh, parang tayong personal injury suit for yung mismong, yung mismong um, amount ng kiniklaim sa'yo na 3 million. Pero sabi ng counsel mo, Ang unfavorable, ang unfavorable verdict could result in a loss ranging. Meron siyang range na binigay. 1.8 million to 2.8 million. Pero, the lawyer believes that the most, the most reasonable or the best estimate, in other words, the most reasonable estimate is 2.2 million. So, how much should you record your provision? So, of course, you should record your provision using the most reasonable estimate. So, sinabi natin yan kanina, balikan natin. Sabi natin, ang gagamitin natin ay yung best estimate. Okay? So, dito sa ating sample, um, binigyan ka lang niya ng range, pero sabi pa rin ng lawyers mo na ang best estimate is 2.2 million. So, for this example, our answer will still be 2.2 million. So, debit, loss, or expense, kung anong account yung gagamitin mo, and then credit your provision for damages. It's a liability account. It's an, So, you have to record it here para mag-appear to sa financial statements mo. So, you have a liability of 2.2 million. This is your estimate. However, take note that the range na pwede mong bayaran is 2.8 million. 1.8 to 2.8 million. So, pwede umangat siya in the future. Halimbawa, kapag sinatin mo na talaga, biglang 2.8 million pa lang. So, it's po... So, meron kang possible, additional possible of obligation, uh, additional possible obligation na kailangan mo rin i-disclose sa notes to financial statement. So, of course, your provision is 2.2, pero meron ka pa rin uh, possible na umangat siya sa 2.8, kaya kailangan mo i-disclose yung 600,000. Just for the, syempre, para pagdinig na ng ano, mga users ng financial statements mo, then, um, malalaman nila na may pwede pala or may posible palang bayaran ka na 600,000 pesos. So, you just have to disclose it but still, the provision is measured at 2.2 million. Okay? So, I hope that's clear and let's proceed to our uh, fourth example. So, in this illustration, La Casa de Papel Incorporated sells goods with a warranty so, ito yung sinasabi natin kanina, warranty for the goods. So, you, you know this, di ba? When you get your phones or your computer, kapag may sira, pwede kang bumalik sa kanila with no charge at all. Libre. So, tatanong kayo, bakit kaya libre yung warranty, di ba? So, meron silang warranty kasi kapag nire-record nila yung sale ng goods na yun, meron na silang provide for warranty. And in this example, we will see how it is. So, in this illustration, La Casa de Papel, uh, sells goods with a warranty under which customers are covered for the cost of uh, under which customers are covered for the cost of any manufacturing defects that become apparent within the first year after purchase. So first year after purchase. If minor defects were detected in all products sold uh, sorry, wait now. Okay, so if major effects were detected in all products sold, repair cost of 5 million would result. Ah, so, sorry, for the minor defects, kapag minor defects yung na-detect sa lahat ng products, ang total, uh, ang total cost mo para dun sa paggawa nun, sa paggawa ng mga defective product na yun, it will be 2 million yung warranty expense mo. Pero, pag major, so sa minor, siguro like mga... Um, hindi lang bumukas or once, may sira sa button na kayang-kayang gawin. So, kapag ganun, it's a minor defect, 2 million lang daw. Pero, kapag major defect ang natitext sa products 
in all products sold, repair cost of 5 million would result. The enterprise past experience and future expectations indicate that 60, so ito, meron siyang past experience and meron na silang um, based on judgment of management. Nasabi na nila na 60% of the goods sold would have no defects. So yung 60% probable is wala naman siyang defect. And then 30% of the goods sold have minor defects. So 30% lang naman pala yung magkakaroon ng minor defects. And 10% of the goods sold have major defects. So for this example, how can we um how can we solve or measure reliably the um the amount for the provision for warranty? So sa pagbenta natin ng sa pagbenta natin ng goods natin, um magse-set up na tayo ng liability sa inaasahan nating babalik sa atin para magpagawa for warranty. So Ganon din yan kapag bumibili tayo ng mga computers or phones. Actually, they have to record the liability because, yun nga, as part of us buying the products and there are possible defects, we have to go back to them and they have to set up the warranty. Kasi nga, possible na may mga bumalik. Katulad sa example na to, na, dito sa example na to, na-estimate na nila na pwedeng 30% doon merong minor defects and 10% doon merong major defects. So, dapat, ngayon pa lang, pag binenta natin siya, Ngayon, under the matching principle, dapat ay meron tayong provision for warranty. So, how would we record it? So, it is the uh, it is probable that the sale of defective merchandise will result in an uh, so definitely meron tayong provision and uh, the sale created an obligation and the best estimate of the obligation is the expected value of the outcome which is derived by weighting all possible outcomes by their associated probability. So, ito na yung dinidiscuss natin. Let's go back to our way of measuring provisions. So, di ba, if we are dealing with a large population and um, we can weight all the possible outcomes by their associated possibilities. So, for this example, let's go to the Excel file. So, gagamit tayo ng expected value. So, it's just very easy, actually. So, let's go to uh, to my Excel file to solve the problem. So, dito, di ba, magpakabit tayo for warranty expense. Uh, and, hindi ko pala nakapit dito ang problem. So, sabi nila, sabi niya ng problem, 60% is no defect. So, lagay natin dito, 60%. And ilan yung may minor defects? 30%. And ilan yung major defects? 10 million. Ay, 10%. 10%. So remember, bigyan niya tayo ng amount na possible natin gastusin kapag nangyari itong mga to. So syempre, kapag possible obligation. So, syempre, kapag no defects, wala tayong problema dyan. Wala tayong warranty expense dyan. So, zero. And then, So, for minor defects, how much nga daw yung gagastasin natin pag minor defects? It's 2 million. 2 million. And kapag major defects is 5 million. So basically, we just have to get the expected value and to weigh all the possible outcomes. So sabi niya, 60%, kapag yung 60%, no expense on there. Kapag naman minor defects, it's just 2 million, pero you just have 30% na mangyari yun. So you just get the 30%. You just have 30% probability na mangyari yun. So you only set up 600,000. And for the major defects, there's only a 10% probability na mangyari yun. So we only get 10% of 5 million. So, in total, our answer is 1.1 million. So, as we record it, we should debit warranty expense, 1.1 M, and provision for warranty credit of 1.1 million. So, it's quite... So, siguro medyo malilito ka lang how to get or how to compute for the proper amounts, pero actually, it's quite easy. 
So you just have to really understand the concept behind it. Okay? So... Let's go back to our presentation. So here is our NT, the warranty expense and the provision for warranty. Now for our last illustration para sa provisions, we're almost done with the first section of this discussion. Of this discussion. So let's now go to Avengers Incor Incorporated. So in our case five, Avengers Incorporated is charged with multiple lawsuits because of an accident that happened in February 2020, causing the death of about 80 persons due to stampede in sales promotion program it was airing through Channel 5 on February 10, 2020. Now, based on similar, so hindi pala ito yung first time, or, ah, okay, so nag-refer sila sa mga past events like this for other entities. So based on similar incidents suffered by other entities, Avengers legal counsels are of the opinion that it is probable that Avengers would be found liable for the incident. So it is probable, sabi ng mga lawyers, it is probable that Avengers would be found liable for the incident. So probable. Kaya ngayon, we have to ask, is it measured, is it, uh, it could it be measured reliably? Because if it can, then it, we have to set up a provision, okay? So let's see. As of the date of issuance of the 2020 financial statements, a reasonable estimate of the obligation is between 16 million to 24 million. And each point within the range is as likely as any other. So, dito, papasok tayo sa ating another special way of computing for the provision, which is, eto, di ba sabi niya, if there is a continuous range of possible outcomes, and each point in the range is likely as any other, then what should we use? We should use the midpoint of the range. So, it's very easy. What is our range? 16 million to 24 million. So, we just have to compute. 16 million plus 24 million divided by 2 to get the midpoint. So, the answer is 20 million. So, here is our answer. The entry to set up the provision is, okay, of course, debit, loss, or expenses, loss from damages, of course. So, it's a one-time event, kaya it is a loss. Now, credit provision for damages, this is a liability account of 20 million. So, remember, kapag large population of items and a continuous range of possible outcomes na walang, uh, and there is no better estimate in the range. Di ba kayo kanina natin example, meron siyang best estimate kahit nagbigay siya ng range. Pero for this example, meron siyang range na binigay and each point within the range is likely as any, any other point. So walang better or best estimate dun sa range, then you will just use the midpoint of the range, which is in this case, 20 million pesos. So, okay. And this is measured at the midpoint of the range. So, clear pa tayo dun. Do you have any questions for our first section? So, um, for the current liabilities, there are uh, many other topics. And later on, we will discuss the notes payable, which is usually a current liability. Pero, take note, we're just focusing on important and I think, um, kumbaga, more complicated items dito sa ating discussion for today. So, I, I will not discuss everything because it takes semesters or months to discuss everything in detail. But we're focusing on those um, topics that are quite challenging when we talk about these topics in Intermediate Accounting Part 2. So, for the provision, this ends the discussion. Uh, actually, ang nakakalito lang talaga dito, especially for the exams or the CPA board exam, uh, ang nakakalito talaga dito is... Um, do you have, parang kung baga, kailangan mo i, kailangan mo i-check, kailangan mo ba talagang magbigay or mag-record ng provision or not? So, medyo dun lang iikot yung mga question dyan eh. Do you have to recognize a provision or just a contingent liability? And how much should you measure or how much should be the amount that you record as your provision? Kaya itong mga illustration natin is, uh, these are the different examples that you will actually, uh, that you will actually encounter. Um, so you just have to understand the concept and just understand and 
remember the two rules and the criterias para mag-record ng provision. So, you can use our table earlier. So, where's our table? Here is our table. Earlier, you can use this as your reference para malaman nyo if you should uh, record a provision or a contingent liability or just ignore the uh, the remote obligation. Okay, so, um, ano pa bang tips for provision? So, yun lang. You just remember the criteria. You just know how to solve and you're good with the provisions. Okay? So, before... So for our next topic, we will discuss notes and bonds payable. So these two, uh, this quite the same naman yung concept nila. So we will be discussing it um, one after the other. But for now, let's have at least a five-minute break. So para i-refresh lang natin yung mga utak natin since ang dami na natin may usapang mga provisions or what. So let's just have a five-minute break to rest our mind for a while. Take a CR break, drink your water. So just to... So let's go back after five minutes with a refreshed mind para ready na naman ulit tayo mag-tackle about notes and bonds payable. Okay, so let's have a five-minute break. Let me call on our MCs, Vanessa and uh, Evangeline. Okay, so now let's go back to the notes and bonds payable. So... Um, aware naman tayo sa classification of assets and liabilities, right? So, when it's due within 12 months or when you have to pay it within 12 months, then it's a current liability. So, if it's beyond 12 months, then it is a, uh, then it is a non-current liability. So, for our discussion for today, uh, we will be discussing about notes payable. So, notes payable... Usually, it is a current liability, but it really depends. We cannot just classify it as a current liability. It depends on the terms of the notes. <clears throat> it depends on the terms of the notes. So, kung two years or three years, then definitely it's a non-current liability. So, it really depends. Uh, but in our example for today, uh, the, our notes example will only be valid for one year. And then later on, when we discuss the non-current liability, our example will be on the bonds payable. So as I said, it doesn't uh, it doesn't really mean na kapag sinabi natin notes payable is current agad siya. But it depends on the terms and the agreements of the parties for the notes payable. So usually lang, um, ginagamit siya minsan ng mga um, parties for um, for one year. Pero it depends kung anong uh, pag-agrihan nyo. Halimbawa, meron kang accounts payable and then you you saw your cash flow, probably not enough pala yung uh, cash flow mo or hindi mo mababayaran on time, then uh, pwedeng mag-issue ka ng notes payable, kapalit ng accounts payable mo. So you have a promissory note or you have a written promise to pay. Uh, for for example, for a longer period. Kasi di ba pag accounts payable, usually mga 30 days lang yan. So, minsan yung iba, ginagawa nila, instead of the accounts payable, nag issue sila ng notes payable ulit to promise your supplier na magbabayad ka, pero in a longer period of time. So, it depends kung anong transaction yung mag-aaray, si ba't kailangan yung mag-notes payable. Pero, we are going to discuss how do we account for the notes payable. So, as an accountant, of course, we have to know how to account for this uh, financial assets and liabilities. So, notes payable is a promissory note. Uh, it is a written uh, promise to pay a certain sum of money to the bearer, kung kanina mo binigay yung note, <clears throat> at a designated future time. So, the notes may arise out of either a trade situation, tulad ng discuss natin na, nabawa nga for your supplier, or the borrowing of money from a bank or other transaction. So possible, kung meron ka sa bank, you have a notes payable to the bank. So ikaw yung may how, so ikaw yung issuer, ikaw yung gumawa ng notes payable, so you're saying that you promise to pay kung sino man yung bearer ng note for a certain sum of money at a certain time in the future. So, pag sinabi natin notes payable, mas matagal usually, unlike accounts payable, di ba 30 days lang, pero pag notes payable, mas matagal kasi yung um, period na pinag-uusapan natin dito. That's why sa notes payable, it is of course uh, very common or actually it is a natural characteristic of notes payable to have a interest payment. Siyempre, um, you're saying to your supplier, babayaran mo siya after one year. 
imbes na 30 days. So, the, syempre, may period of time na lumipas, na one year, na as if pinahiram kanya ng pera eh, kasi hindi po, pag hindi pa niya pinabayaran sa in halimbawa, one million, dapat one million na yun sa kanya na eh. Pero since you have one year na saka mo palang babayaran, it's as if na pinahiram kanya ng pera. And yung pera na yun, supposedly, kung nasa kanya yun, syempre, na-interesan niya yun, na kumita na yun. Kaya, when we say notes payable, Usually, na meron talaga tong interest expense na pinag-uusapan. So it is an interest payment that uh, it is an inter <coughs> it is an interest payment na um, that you pay to your uh, to the bearer. Kasi nga as if pinahiram kaya ng pera or actually pinahiram ka rin ng pera kasi nga you hindi ka pa niya ni-require magbayad after one year pa. Kaya ngayon sa notes payable, pag-aaralan natin siya uh Taking taken to mind na meron talagang interest expense kasi minsan <coughs> ito yung nagpapagulo ng ito nagpapagulo ng discussion or computation actually na accounting ng notes payable or even bonds payable when we talk about the interest and the effective interest so just uh, let's just focus on this focus on the notes payable this time so just know that yun yung nature niya ng notes payable so as i said meron tayong interest bearing notes payable Diba sabi ko kanina, nature ng notes payable na meron siyang interest. And in this example, it is an interest bearing notes payable. Sabi Ibig sabihin po. Uh, yes? Excuse me lang po. Uh, maybe ito may kita yung presentation po sa uh, live po. Kaso may nikita. Ah, oh, wait. Sige, try natin ulit. Ayan, okay na? Okay na po. Thank you po. Ayan. So, balik tayo dito, di ba? Sayang naman yung definition natin dito. So, I think para, ma, para sa mga visual learners dyan. So, ayan. Ito yung definition natin for the notes payable, okay? <coughs> Ngayon, for the interest-bearing notes uh, payable, so, ayan na nga. When we say interest-bearing, it means meron siyang interest rate stated on the note itself kasi diba it is a note so it is a note na nakalagay doon it is uh, you have a promise to pay so uh, so actually it's just contract usually naman eh no so doon nakalagay yung stated interest rate kung magkano yung bayaran mong interest every time so remember tayo uh, when we account for the for this we are uh, as if the issuer of the notes payable so tayo yung magbabayad okay so tayo yung magbabayad ng interest payment also dun sa bearer ng notes payable natin na initial natin okay so since the note is interest bearing the present value of the note at the time of issuance is its face value the issuance of such a note is recorded as follows. So, patulad ng example natin kanina, nag-debit siya ng accounts payable. So, probably nakipag-usap siya kay supplier na, sorry, sorry talaga. So, supplier, hindi mo lang makapagbayad ng within 30 days, can I just issue a note instead to promise you that I will pay it in one year? So, if you have good terms with a supplier naman, usually, pa five naman si supplier. So, then you debit accounts payable and then you credit the notes payable. And then at the maturity date, the payment is made for the principal and interest. Remember, meron kang interest expense na babayaran dito kay um, supplier sa, for the benefit na pinahiram niya sa yung pera or hindi niya pinabayar sa yung pera for one year. So you were able to use that, for example, one million, diba, to invest pa or to pay your expenses. So it's... Um, <coughs> That's why meron kang interest na binabayaran. It's for the use of money. So, very straightforward lang tayo pag interest bearing. Ko ano yung stated rate, basta when basta realistic interest rate siya. Uh, when we say realistic interest rate, kumbaga pag kinumpare natin siya sa similar notes in the market, uh, at par naman or kumbaga um medyo similar naman yung rates natin. Kasi mamaya pag uh, when we say sa market, kumbaga uh, yung mga financial instruments ng ibang entities na lahat ng entities or other entities. So, syempre mayroon tayong tinatawag na market rate, di ba? Kumbaga, this similar items, this similar financial instruments, ang interest rate na to should be this amount. So, 
Halimbawa, ang market rate mo is 5%. Kapag magagalitong notes, 5% lang. Usually, yung mga uh, ginagamit na rate, so that's the interest rates, that's the rate the, uh, the, the bearer is willing to pay for that kind of note, di ba? So, pambaya 5% lang yung dapat na market rate, ang katanggap-tanggap na market rate para sa note mo. Tapos, mag, uh, tapos uh, biglang... Uh, let's say 20% pala yung pinapabayad sa inyo supplier. So, kumbaga, hindi siya realistic. Kasi masyado, masyado siyang malayo sa normal market rate ng similar financial instrument. Kaya sinasabi natin re realistic yung interest rate dito. Ibig sabihin, yung stated interest rate mo dun sa note mo is quite the same with the market. So, wala tayong issue dito. So, tama lang yung um, interest rate uh, gamit mo. So, we can proceed with our computation. So, kung ano man yung um, principal amount natin, multiply lang natin interest rate and then that's the interest expense you pay to the uh, bearer at the maturity date. So, yun lang. Compute lang ilang percent. Yung ba? 5%, 1 million. So, yun na yung interest payment mo. Ngayon naman, punta tayo kay non-interest bearing note. <coughs> So, let's read first the definition. So, a non-interest bearing note is slightly more complex. Uh, it does not explicitly state an interest rate on the face of the note. So, take note of this. This is simply written in a form where the interest is imputed on the face value of the note. Thus, face value represents the present value of the obligation plus the imputed interest for the term of the note. So, we said na the nature of... <coughs> We said that the nature of note payable is meron siyang interest, di ba? Pero bakit merong non-interest bearing note? So, pag sinabi natin non-interest bearing note, basically lang, dun sa note mo mismo, walang stated na interest rate. But, since it's a note payable, dito, sinasabi natin, yung stated value mo dun, kumbaga yung, halimbawa, yung nasa note mo is 1 million, di ba? And wala kang interest expense stated, wala kang babayaran. Uh, apart from the 1 million. So, ibig sabihin lang nun, since it's still a note payable, um, it only means na yung interest na babayaran mo for the money use or for the use of money for that one year is actually included in the 1 million. So, yun lang yung sinasabi nitong non-interest bearing note. As I said, <clears throat> kahit na ba 1 million yan, sinasabi natin, since it's a note, you just still have to pay the interest kasi you borrowed the money for one year, for example, di ba? So, you still have to pay the interest. That's why, kahit na mag, wala kang ilagay na stated interest, meron pa rin siyang imputed interest kung pag may kasama pa rin yun sa babayaran mo. Yun nga lang, ibig sabihin, yung 1 million, so, yung 1 million, may kasamang interest doon. That's why, kapag ganito yung case, kailangan natin mag-compute ng present value. Kasi ibig sabihin, yung 1 million na yun, for example, after 1 year, Yung 1 million na yun, may kasama yung interest uh, interest payment. Kaya kailangan natin i-backtrack sa ngayon at kailangan natin kunin yung present value. So, yung present value niya is the amount of cash received or fair value of goods and services received. So, actually, the present value, hindi kasama doon yung interest. So, as time goes by, as per month, per month goes by, di ba? So, nadadagdagan yung interest hanggang sa pagdating sa dulo, 1 million na yung total mong babayaran. Pero the present value is not 1 million. So, it depends on the rate, di ba? Halimbawa, let's say na uh, 12% yung rate mo. So, 1 million. Ibig sabihin, yung 1 million mo na yan includes the principal amount and the in, imputed interest. So, yung 1 million na yan, hindi yan yung present value ng notes mo. Ang present value ng notes mo, aalisin mo dyan yung 12% na interest. So, if it's 12%, let's just divide it to 1.12. Diba? That's 100% plus 12%. So, i-go-go back natin siya to 100%. Kaya, divided by 1.12. So, ibig sabihin, the present value is 892 1,857. So, ibig sabihin, ito lang talaga yung present value or as if yung principal na hiniram mo ngayon. Pero pagdating ng one year, after one year, ang babayaran mo is 1 million. Bakit? Yung difference na yon is the imputed interest that you have to pay as the borrower, as the uh, issuer of the notes payable.
Okay, so uh, medyo confusing siya, I know, but let's try our best sa pag-solve later ng mga illustrations para mas maintindihan nyo ito. So guys, uh, take this opportunity na intindihin natin siya ng maayos because I'm telling you, hindi ito yung first time na may encounter nyo ito. So when you go to second year or third year or fourth year in the CPA board exam and even when you start to work, so... Year by year, sa audit, when I was in audit, I'm doing this. <clears throat> I'm using the effective interest method. So right now pa lang, even if you're just in the first year, it will be a very good advantage. If matuto na kayo, how to use the effective interest method? Because I'm telling you, definitely, may encounter nyo to. Hindi man ngayon, but soon enough, gagamitin natin to. Kaya let's try our best na unawain siya at malaman kung paano siya gawin. At least, ma-familiarize tayo para when it comes to time na dinis ka sa so, university, then it will be a bit easier for us. Okay? <clears throat> so, the discounted amount, that is the present value, is the face value less imputed interest. Sa so, face value, face value yung face, nasa note ng face, uh, nasa uh, amount ng face ng notes. So, face value is the, for example, natin 1 million, yun, yun. Kung ano yung um, dun sa amount to pay. I, okay, we'll pay you, I will pay you 1 million from, in, halimbawa, April 17, 2022. So, that is the face value. So, the discounted amount is used to initially record the liability. Okay, so yun lang yung magiging value or um amount ng liability mo at your end. Or at the issuance date. So, it's very important na actually, di lang, actually, itong computation na to, even when I took the CMA exam, this still is very used. Kaya, very, even sa MAS or sa Management Advisory Services, nagamitin nyo pa rin talaga itong computation na to. Kaya, i-master na natin siya. <clears throat> okay, so at year end, the balance of discount is deducted from the face value of the note to arrive at amortized cost to be presented in DFS. Okay, let's have an example para mas maunawaan natin siya. <clears throat> we have quite many examples here, pero kaya natin. So, case one, remember a note, inter a note pa lang yung uusapan natin dito. So, medyo simple pa siya kasi we're just talking about a period of one year. So, okay, let's try this case one. The non, okay, non-interest bearing note na tayo agad-agad ha, kasi mas mahirap to or mas complex to kumbara sa, sa interest bearing. Kasi kasi interest bearing, ano lang siya, um, straightforward lang siya. Okay, for our illustration, on October 1, 2020, L Incorporated purchased an equipment, paying 100,000 down and issuing a one-year non-interest bearing note for 200,000. There is no known market value for the equipment and the prevailing market rate of interest for similar transactions at the time is 12%. So since there is no market value for the um, equipment, magda-derive tayo ng selling price ng equipment based dun sa binayad natin. And hindi natin agad pwedeng sabihin na 300,000 yon. Remember, yung 200,000 dyan na non-interest bearing note, uh, meron yung kasamang interest. So, kailangan natin siya ihiwalay. And how do we separate them? Let's go to our computation illustration. So, dito tayo kay note payable. Okay? So, for the down payment, ang una natin i-compute is the cost of the equipment. Okay? What is the cost of the equipment? The down payment is 100,000. So, as I said, As I said, hindi natin agad ilalagay dyan yung face value na 200,000 kasi meron yung kasama na um, interest payment. So, ang gagamitin lang natin is the present value of the note. How do we get the present value of the note? So, it's quite easy. Um, lagay ko muna dito sa gilid. Uh, how much is the face value? It's 200,000. And there, so, one year lang to, uh, one year lang tong note natin. <clears throat> And the market rate of interest, since wala tayong interest, ang gagamitin natin is yung market rate of interest. So, ito yung sinasabi ko, this is the prevailing market rate for similar types of financial instruments. So, yung mga one-year notes payable number or 
the same instruments. Ito yung rate na ginagamit. So, this will be the market rate that we will use. So, it's just 200,000. Remember, si 200,000 na yan, dito nga tayo sa gilid. Ay, sa baba. Remember, si 200,000 na yan, pati ito. Meron siyang 12%. Meron siyang 12% na rate at meron din siyang 100% ng um ng principal amount. Kaya ako siya dinidivide sa 1.12 or sa or 112% to get the principal amount. So how do we get this 100%? So divide mo siya 112% or as I do it is 1.12. So ibig sabihin ito yung present value no ating note. Ibig sabihin, yung principal mo dyan is the 178,500. Ibig sabihin, yung 12% mo dyan is 12% na itong principal amount mo. So, check nga natin. Dapat total to. Ha. So, times 0.12. So, pag inad natin to, should be 200,000. So, correct siya. Ibig sabihin, ito yung present value natin. So, para mas madali, pwede naman natin siyang i-compute as 200,000 divided by 1.12. Hindi na tayo kailangan gumawa ng breakdown tulad sa baba. So, please yung natin yung format. And then, that is your answer. So, the total cost of the equipment is now 300,000. It is 278,571. Uh, so, when we compute for the discount on notes payable, so, ibig sabihin, ito yung, uh, ito yung uh, imputed interest na actually binabayad mo. So, the face value of the note is 200,000. Iless lang natin yung present value. O, dito nang tayo sa tax mo refer. So, the, an the discount on notes payable is 21,428. So, very, very easy lang, di ba? So, i-plot lang natin siya sa ating um, journal entries. So, our entry will be equipment of 278,571, the discount on notes payable. So, remember, it is a discount. It is a bawas to notes payable. Kaya siya debit. Okay? The, the cash is 100,000. Down payment of 100,000. And the notes payable is how much? So, okay. So, check this out. Diba sabi natin, pag pinresent mo siya sa year end, should be the present value. Pero, ang ipapasok natin is the face value of the note na 200,000. Ngayon, okay, check mo na natin kung balance yung journal. 300,000, 300,000 balance yung journal. Tama yung journal. Ngayon, sabi mo ano, present value gagamitin. So, yan na yung role ni discount on notes payable. Pag pinresent natin ito sa financial statement, I-present mo siya, notes payable, naka-less si contra account. This is a contra account. Naka-less si discount on notes payable. So basically, at year end, so wait lang, uh, this is October 1, 2020. So mag-record muna tayo ng interest expense. Remember, kapag tayo, interest bearing, Cash agad yan. Kasi nga magbabayad ka. Pero for this example, hindi tayo magbabayad ng cash per se. Kasi nga, kasama dun sa babayaran natin of uh, one year from now, yung interest. Kaya, ibabawas lang natin siya sa discount on notes payable. Okay? So, ang interest expense natin, complete na natin. So, sa saan tayo magbabase ng uh, interest expense? So, of course, dun sa um, present value ng notes mo. So, this is 178,000. Uh, 178,000 times ilang percent siya? 12%? Yan na ba yun? Of course, hindi pa. Take note. Yung 12% na yan, annually, for 12 months. Pero, October 1 lang to. Nagre-record tayo as of December. Lagyan natin siya ng date. So, nagre-record tayo dito as of December 31, 2020. Kaya ang interest mo for 3 months lang. So that is two, uh, that is 178 times 12% times 3 lang over 12. Kasi that's good for the 20% kasi good. That's good for the whole year. So basically it's just 5000 
So it's 5,357 and the discount on notes payable is 5,357. So pag, pag na natin siya sa 2020 na year end. So 2020 to ha. notes payable mo is of course at face value pa rin pero naka-contra account si notes payable. So, magkano na yung notes payable natin? Take note, nabawasan na siya na itong 5,000. Kaya, yun yung balance niya at year end. So, the value of your notes payable at year end is 183,928. Okay? So, paano naman pagdating ng 2021? Kailan natin siya babayaran? Eh di syempre, October 1, 2021. So of course, you have to record the remaining uh, interest expense. Kaya ang i-compute lang natin, uh, gamitin lang ulit natin si present value times 12%. Then, ilang months to? Uh, January to September is 9 months over 12 times 9 divided by 12. So, the total is 16,000 na ibabawas mo sa discount mo. Oops! Mukhang familiar, right? So, yeah. Same na sila ng amount. So, pagdating ng year-end, your discount on notes payable will be zero. And when you pay your notes payable, it will be the 200,000. Okay. Wow. Siguro... Gawa muna tayo dito uli ng another table. Magkano na siya bago? Ito bago, bago the payment. Kaya natin, October, uh, September, kunwali September 30, 2021. So, ang notes payable mo, same pa rin na 200,000. Pero ang discount ng notes payable mo, magkano na? From 16, so from this one, and then, binawasan mo siya ng 16. So, okay. Wait. Ah. So, binawasan mo yung 16 mo. Nag binawasan mo pa ng 16. Kaya, naging 0. So, ang total um, balance ng notes payable mo, ibig sabihin, kumbaga, um... Pumasok na dun sa notes payable mo kasi nag-ubos na yung discount, yung interest expense mo recorded na. Kaya ibig sabihin, imbes na cash, di ba, sa discount on notes payable natin siya nilalagay. And then finally, at the, at this eh, at this um period, um when ubos na yung discount on notes payable natin, kasi nga pumasok na siya as interest, sa book, interest expense, remember, pasok yan sa PNL. So at year end, ang total na nating babayaran is the 200,000. So... Our notes payable is 200,000, debit and cash of 200,000. So there you have it after your payment. Magsi zero na yung notes payable mo. So take note lang ha, dito sa dalawang interest expense nating journal entry, nag-record ka ng interest expense pero wala kang cash na um ginastos kasi nga doon siya pumasok sa discount on notes payable. Remember, doon sa uh, that dun sa ating 2020 na balance at year end, tignan mo dyan, meron kang discount on notes payable na as if 16,000. Ibig sabihin, ang, ang due mo pa lang talaga at year end is yung 183,928. Pero pagdating ng year end, nag-ubos na yung discount mo kasi nga you, pay, you recorded it as interest expense sa yung PNL, then the total payable will be 200,000. Kung baga parang pwede mo lang din siyang tignan na ang payable mo talaga sa totoo ay yung sa issuance or sa beginning is 178,000. Pero since nagpasok ka ng interest expense, pero hindi mo siya kinatch, di ba? Naigay mo siya sa discount on notes payable. So this is another thing that you have to pay. So, parang ganyan yung magiging itsura niya. Kaya at the end, kailangan mo talaga mag-buy ng 200,000. So, 178,000 para dun sa face value or sa principal amount as if. And this two for the imputed interest. So, that's it. I hope this is clear for you. So, this is just a simple concept. Later on sa bonds payable, uh, it's much more uh, mahaba. So, let's proceed para 
matapos natin or umabot tayo sa bonus kayo. Okay. Any questions? Okay, no questions so far. Let's go back to our um, presentation. Now for the case two, the stated rate is significantly different from the market rate of similar notes. So take note dito, meron tang stated rate, pero yung market rate na pinag-uusapan natin kanina is different. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, we still have to use, so in such cases, the note and the interest to be paid based on the stated rate are discounted pa rin siya at market rate of interest on the date of issuance. So, kapag it's significantly different, kailangan pa rin natin mag-compute na interest, uh, ng effective interest um, expense and ng effective interest, we should still use the effective interest method. So, and for our illustration, on May 1, 2020, Diana Corp purchased from Smith Company a piece of special equipment by issuing a 14% one-year note for 320,000. Okay, walang down payment dito. Note lang lahat. There is no equivalent cash price for this equipment, but the market rate of interest in similar notes is 8%. Pero yung stated interest mo is 14%. So let's proceed to our illustration para mas malinaw at maliwanagan tayo. So... We have to first compute for the present value of the future um, of the future cash flows. Okay, so this might get um medyo nakakalito lang na onte pero bear with me. So for the principal, so for the principal, lagay muna natin si principal. How much is the principal amount? It's 320,000. So kailangan natin mag-compute ng interest rates. That's 320,000 times a uh, quick times 14 a uh, percent. The issue is 14 percent. Okay. So, ibig sabihin, ito yung mga babayaran natin with the interest payment. Yan. Okay. So, paano natin kukunin ang future cash flows? So, kunin natin ang total future cash, cash flows mo sa lab ng one year is 364,800. Pero remember, etong amount na to, may kumbaga meron iba pa rin yung effective interest mo. Kahit na sabihin mo meron kang stated na 14% uh, interest since your stated interest nga is significantly different from the market rate. Ang papasok pa rin sa libro mo for the accounting part is the effective interest and how do we compute that? We still compute the present value factor. So Itong 364,800, including your interest payment, is yung total na babayaran mo. But we will discount it in the market interest rate. And how do we discount this? So, 8%. So, actually, ito lang siya. Um, this one, ay, PV, PV factor. So, it's actually 1 over 1.08. So, ang mangyayari lang dun, parang ita times lang natin siya. So, ita times natin siya. So, this is the same method I used earlier, di ba? Parang ganito lang din siya. Um, 364, 364, divide mo lang siya sa 1. 1.08. So, same lang din siya ng computation. So, basically, yung 364,800 na yan, ang principal as if dyan is 337,778 with effective interest or the interest per market rate na yung ko ano man yung difference. Okay? So, let's compute for the initial cost of the notes payable. So, of course, ang kanyang face value is 320,000. Pero ang kanyang um, present value is 337,000. So, kung makapansin nyo dito, mas malaki yung face ay uh, yung present value kaysa sa face value, ibig sabihin, meron kang premium on your notes payable. So, ang present value niya as if ngayon, actually, is malaki, is maganda, kasi meron kang premium. Pero, ang babayaran mo lang at the end is actually uh, 320,000. So, okay. Uh, now, we got the premium. So, that is a credit. Kanina, di ba, contra account yung discount? Ngayon naman, ito ay... Um, Nakapit ko ng color account. So, ito, nakadikit to kay notes payable. So, record natin ng price ng equipment. This is, of course, 337000 And then, we have a credit of notes payable na 
of course, at least ito. Kasi nga, pag nireport natin siya at uh, year-end or at issuance, naka-add si premium payable. So, of course, so the balance mo at year-end for the notes payable, same with kanina, add premium on notes payable. So, at the date of issuance, the amount is, add mo lang to, So, ito yung uh, notes payable mo at year, uh, at issuance date. So, same with kanina, let's just compute the interest expense. Your interest expense is, itong interest expense, of course, is based sa effective interest mo, which is the present value. So, dito tayo may present value ang uha. Times, ano yung effective interest, uh, ang kanil interest expense mo na uh, related... That is 8%, right? So, that's 8%. Like 8% times. Ilang buwan lang naman ang... Ilang buwan uli yung binig lang natin dito. So, that's May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. So, that's 8 months over 12. Remember yung 8% mo kasi for the whole year yet. So, ayan lang din siya. So, let's just continue with that. So, ang premium on notes payable mo, mamaya na yan, sige, figure yan. So, magkano naman interest payable mo? Ito, yung stated interest mo. Ito yung babayaran mo na naga. So, that's actually a, uh, 320,000 times, you know, percent, 14 percent times 8 over 12. So, the difference between the two will be the kabawasan on your premium, will be the amortization, as we call it, the amortization on your premium notes payable. So, at year-end, what will be the new balance of your notes payable? So, kapag na-report natin siya, remember, sa presentation, naka-add itong si premium, okay? So, same si notes payable, 320,000. Pero ang premium mo na is 17,000 minus 11,000 na. So, ang total mo na is 325,000. Yung ita-present ko siyo, financial statements. So, Okay? Ngayon, pag binayaran na natin siya. Okay. <laughs> so, ngayon naman, we have to refer to the amortization of the amort of the uh, premium on notes payable. So, ngayon, magbabayad na tayo. We have, of course, to close the premium on notes payable, which is the remaining. Minus lang natin siya. Ay, actually, ito na siya. Yung 5925. And then, of course, as kabawasan sa yung interest expense. So, when we finally pay the notes payable, of course, that's 325. Mawawala na yung 595. Kaya 320,000 na ang talagang babayaran mo sa notes payable. And then, your interest payable for the remaining um, months, of course, is same computation kanina, 320,000 times 14%. 14,000? Times, ilang months na lang natitira, that's 4 divided by 12. At ang interest expense mo effective is, of course, pertaining sa... Okay, saan, 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 ang bago mo, saan ang present value mo? Ito. So, times... Ay, sorry, sorry. So, this one times... Ang kami yung ginawa natin percent? 0.8. So, 8% or 0.8, it's just the same. Times, ilan na titan ang months? 4 over 12. So, ang total cash na babayaran mo is 343,000. Okay, so, for our notes payable illustration number 2, we just have a bit of correction for the journal entries. So, the computation is still the same, but we have to change the journal entries for the payment on the maturity date. So, just for easy reference, let's put some dates in here. So, this will be May 1, 2020. And then, this is December 31, 2020. And, of course, the payment is on May 1, 2021 and May 1, 2021. So, for here, we just had a bit of a error, of an error. So, this 14933 should be the interest expense for... 
using the 14% or the stated interest. Because as you can see here, we have already credited the interest expense or the amortization of the premium on those payables here. So the effect of this will be an effective interest of 9007. So this should be the interest expense because if we record the 9007 here, then it will be a dual or a double entry. So it will be wrong. So this should be 14933 since we have credited 5925 or the uh, remaining uh, amortization on premium on those payable here. So for the interest payable, this will just be the accrued interest that we had recorded on the previous year, which is 29866. Okay, so there. So all in all, the total will be 364800 So the uh, total interest you will pay is 44800 So this might be a bit confusing when we when you see that the recording or the journal entries we did here. It's not, uh, it's not the same with the ones we did on the year end on December 31, 32 uh on 2020 so what we'll do is we have another alternative entry so it will be easier for us to understand to understand the flow of the transaction so what we'll do here is we'll uh, make an alternative journal entry for may 1 2021 but before the payment actually you can reverse it choose to reverse it but will not so before um so for this we'll do an entry just like what we did in year end but of course here the interest expense will be based on the present value again times eight percent but the remaining four months so that's times four over 12 only for the remaining four months and same with the interest payable which is based on the face value times 14 percent the stated rate but for, uh, for the four months only so in here you can see that the amortization on premium on uh, notes payable is the same as in here but we'll just see the flow of this better because here is our interest expense effective that will go to the profit or loss. And here is our interest payable, which is our uh, payable, which will be paid on the maturity date. So on the maturity date, we'll also record the payment entry. So that will just be the notes payable. And then, of course, we'll reverse or we'll pay the payable or the accrued interest payable we have accrued. So that's debit to interest payable and the total of cash. So as you can see here, we'll just record this at, of course, at as always at face value. And then the interest uh, payable, which we have recorded earlier. So that's the total. And your total payment will be 364800 As you can see, this is quite just the same as the before entry we will you will still pay of course the cash of 364,800 but it makes it much more easier because we will see how the four months interest was recorded here and here in the profit and loss so still the 5925 is here and the total interest expense is 90075 you don't need to get the net of this one to get your interest expense for the period Right. So it's up to you what journal entry you would like to use. So you can choose either one of this. What works best with you will be what works best with you. Now, for the next one, let's go to... Okay, for the non-current liabilities, kanina di ba kay nose payable, it's more on uh, one year lang yung example natin. Ngayon, mas challenging ng onti itong si bonds payable because... Um, so, mas challenging na on to si nose payable. I see bonds payable kasi usually this is for a more than one year na period. So, let us discuss uh, some theories first. So, the non-current liabilities includes the portion of long-term obligations expected to be settled, of course, beyond 12 months. So, pag more than one year is settled, it's a non-current liability. So, usually, ang mga companies, especially the corporations, they do debt or equity financing. So, when we say debt financing um, or equity financing, it's to get funds. So, halimbawa, si company may gusto project na ipagawa, kailangan nila ng more funds. Uh, they do debt or equity financing. But on this topic, we will focus more on the debt financing. 
So when we say uh, debt financing, when a corporation decides to raise additional funds for long-term purposes, it may borrow by issuing share capital um, to share, sorry. Uh, so when we say debt financing, uh, when a corporation decides to raise additional funds for long-term purposes, it may borrow by issuing additional share capital to shareholders or equity financing. Uh, so, okay, so, so it could be debt financing or it could be uh, uh, equity financing. So it may borrow for uh, from the banks first that's that that's finance that's debt financing or kapag nag issue ka naman ng additional shares that's what we call equity financing and in this one we will be discussing about the bonds ngayon uh, we will be discussing about the bonds um actually this is very common and when we say borrow or raise additional funds we're not just talking about like 1 million or 5 million so usually yung mga corporation na ginagawa to uh, nag-issue nag sila ng bonds payable. So, si company yung mag-issue ng bonds payable. So, for you, to issue a bonds payable na, na mag invest yung mga tao. Kasi pag bonds payable, di ba? Um, syempre, kikita sila via interest. So, syempre, for the investor side, yung bibigyan mo ng, or yung bibigyan mo ng bonds payable na yun, nung bonds na yun, yung babayaran mo ng bonds na yun. So, syempre, on their side, sa investor, uh, they have to make sure na you're a good company so that you can pay the interest to them, di ba? That's why usually the ones who do this are the big companies or the companies who can really, um, you know, who can really, who can really be able to pay the interest for uh, to the bondholders, okay? So... This is actually quite common, and when we say debt financing, pinag usapan natin dito is like uh, 50 million, 100 million, 50 million dollars. You know, mga ganong usapan usually kapag malalaki ang company. Kasi nga, they have to have additional funds probably for new investments or new projects or new buildings or plants, you know, whatsoever. So, kaya, kaya pag bonds, let uh, this is normally so non this is normally under non current liabilities. Kasi nga kasi nga for when we say bonds, talagang malaki ang amount to. Kaya within kaya um, more than 1 year yung payment terms na sinasabi natin. It's more than 1 year. Kapag bonds usually like mo 5, 10 years. So depende sa terms. Pero since malaki yung pinag-usapan natin amount dito, um Usually, mahaba talaga yung payment period mo. Siyempre, magbabayad ka 100 million dollars or 50 million or 1 million. Sabihin na natin 1 million dollars, di ba? Malaki na rin yun. So, yeah. Kaya, mahaba-habang time yung kailangan dyan. Now, for the bonds payable, a bond is a certificate of indebtedness whereby the borrower, kao as a borrower, ikaw yung mag-issue ng bond, ikaw yung may payable. Um, you agree to pay a sum of money sa specific future date plus a periodic interest payment at the stated rate. So, usually, meron 1,000, 5,000, 10,000, refer to, to as face value or par value. So, parang isang, isang bond kasi na ganyan. For example, isang certificate, pwedeng 10,000 yun. So, ipunin mo yun, ilan yung issue mo, depende. So, normally, a corporation sell off it, all of its bond to an investment firm or yung gusto nang mag-invest kasi nga, di ba, kikita sila by the interest payments, referred to as the underwriter which resells the bonds to the investing public or minsan yung corporation nagsasold na directly to the investors. <clears throat> so, the bond indenture, this is basically just the contract between the issuing corporation and the bond holder. So, dito nakalagay ano yung specific, uh, specific terms of the bonds, yung mga rights, duties ng both parties, at mga restrictions on the issuing corporation and all other important details that affects the contracting parties. Now, we have many different types of bonds. So, just to give a brief um, background on the, on the types of bonds, so, first is the term bonds and serial bonds. So, term bonds, basically, pag isa, pag isa lang yung sing, pag single maturity lang siya, kung baga, um, term bonds, sabihin natin, five years will be payable. Yun na yun, term bond yun, kasi isang term lang siya. 
ang mag magmamature. Pero kasi pag serial bonds, it matures on installments. So, for example, every year, 1 million yung maturity yung kailangan bayaran. So, it's a serial bond. Kasi nga, it matures in installments. Now, when you say secured and unsecured bonds, secured bonds basically uh, provide security and protection to investors in the form of specific assets of the issuers, such as the collateral. For example, you issue bonds, pay, or you issue bonds and you get the bonds payable for a construction of a building. So when it's a when it's a construction of a building, pwedeng nakasecure yung bond mo by collateral or by um by as by assigning the building as a collateral. So ibig sabihin pag tikina ka bayad yung building mapupunta dun sa mga um pinagkaotan or yung mga kumuha ng bonds mo. Kaya siya protected. So it it could be na ibenta yung building para mabayaran mo yung bond. So ganun yung mga collateral. So it it's of course you're secured na mababayaran yung investment investment mo kasi nga mayroong um collateral na specific assets. So kapag unsecured bonds usually walang naka-pledge na asset dito. So this is generally generally based on the credit rating of the company. So kung syempre kung wala kang collateral eh Medyo, kumbaga, medyo mahirap mag-invest, di ba? Kasi yung mami, hindi ka makapagbayad. Pero kung maganda naman yung credit rating ng company mo, then that's the time na possible kang magbigay ng unsecured bonds. Kasi nga, with your credit rating, medyo tiwala pa din si um, investors dun sa yung Medyo tiwala pa rin si investors dun sa... Um, na sa capability mo na magbayad to them. So for the registered and bearer coupon bonds, so registered at yung mga bonds na dun sa certificate for bond na kalagay yung name ng um, holder. So kapag binenta yon, papalitan lang yung name ng holder. So kaya registered kasi nga specific yung bond na yon, nakaregister yung name mo as ikaw yung holder. Ngayon pag coupon naman, so halimbawa kasi kapag registered bonds, tas nagpalit ng owner, syempre babaguhin din yun sa books ng company. Na ito na yung new owner ng yung new bond holder ganyan pero pag coupon walang problema kasi wala namang it's not recorded in the name of the owner sa books mo so so yun lang yung difference nila actually and then for the callable and convertible bonds yung callable ibig sabihin di ba nag-issue kang bond pero pwede mo siyang bawian halimbawa ang terms ng bond mo 10 years to pay pa so 10 years ka nagbabayad ng interest di ba pero at the 5th year Siyempre, ang dami, ang dami mo palang pera. So, yun yung callable bonds. At the fifth year, pwede mong i-call back yung bonds mo. Kung baga, babayaran mo na, and then kukunin mo na yung bonds mo. Di ba yung bond certificate na nasa kanila? Kukunin mo na, babayaran mo na. It's the callable bond. But of course, if, of course, if it's not callable, then hindi mo pwede i-preterminate yung bond mo. So, depende yan sa stipulation, sa, depende yan sa agreements ninyo, kung ano nakalagay sa bond indenture. And usually naman, syempre as a, syempre naman, di ba, parang meron ka naman, usually, nakalagay dyan kung magkano yung babayaran mo pag ginawa mo to. Kapag meron call provisions, so if you call back your bonds, then these are the provisions you have to pay this amount or what. Kasi nga naman, syempre lugi si investors if maaga mong kinuha yung bonds kasi wala na silang interest um, income. So pag convertible naman, uh, this Actually, pwede mo lang siyang i-convert to equity. So, ibig sabihin, meron itong bond, pwede mo convert siya sa shares of stock ng company. Halimbawa, kumuha kang bond ni Ayala, bigatin ka, di ba? So, kumuha kang bond ni Ayala. Pag convertible yung bond mo, pwede mo siyang i-convert, depende sa terms and conditions, as a share or a stock in the Ayala Corporation. So, you will have an equity in the Ayala Corporation if kinonvert mo yung bond mo. So, depende kung anong klase ng bonds, it's also, it's usually included naman in the bond indenture and the agreement, so it depends. And lastly, the zero interest bond, also known as gift discount bond. So this is uh, issued at significantly lower than their face value. The total interest on this bond during their entire term is paid together with the principal amount on maturity date. Because yung iba, since halimbawa, serial bonds, every year, merong interest payment for serial bonds though, Yung interest mo is paid like to sa notes payable at the end of, or at the maturity date of the notes of the bonds payable. Okay, so accounting for bonds payable, these are the 
great uh, terms that we have to remember, pero actually na encounter na natin siya sa notes payable, so we are kind of familiar with this. The stated or nominal rate of interest, it's the one that is in the face or ito yung makikita mo dun sa bond na stated interest. Now, the market or effective interest rate we have also discussed is the interest rate which investors are willing to accept on the bond at the time of issue depending on factors such as the market evaluation of the quality uh, of the bond issue. Siyempre, kung, kung mataas or mababa nga yung credit rating or quality ng bonds mo, no? Uh, as evidenced by the financial strength of the business, the firm's earning prospects, and the particular provision of the bond issue. So this, these are the factors that we consider uh, when we're talking about the market uh, rate of our effective interest rate. So just the same, same terms, same meaning. Uh, accounting for, okay, terms to remember, discount and premium. So actually, we encounter that in some notes payable. So discount if the effective interest rate exceeds the stated rate. So tulad ng example natin kanina, ngayon, the issue price of uh, the bonds will fall below the face amount of the bonds. Diba kanina, mas mababa yung present value kasi discount siya. So when the issue price is less than the face value, yung difference na yun is the discount na in amortize natin up to the maturity of the uh, instrument. Now, the premium, so if bond rate exceeds the market interest rate for comparable uh, instruments at the time of issue, like our example, the price of the bonds will exceed the face amounts. That is, the bonds will be sold at a premium. So, actually, na gawan natin itong example na. Okay. So, for the measurement, uh, uh, using the effective... So, using the effective interest method, ginawa na rin natin ito actually kanina, pero ngayon, i-discuss na lang siya more on detail. And since this is a bond, mas mahaba yung period na to, mas marami siyang hanash, kumbaga, than the notes. So, amortization, in order to reflect the total interest cost of the bonds, di ba, we either add or subtract the premium or discount. Kasi yun yung effective interest ng bond. Eh. Uh, over, should be allocated over the life of the bonds using the EIM. The allocation is called amortization, which is a deduction for, from, or addition to the interest um, expense. So we have two examples. So let's discuss them. Now, for the case one on January 1, 2020, let's just, let me just open my notes. Okay. So we have an example here. Uh, it is... A premium situation. So on January 1, 2020, wait, uh, switch na tayo kay Excel file. So bonds case one. On January 1, 2020, a company issues a five year. So di ba pang bonds mas mahaba? This is a five year, 1 million 15% bonds. The stated rate is 15%. The effective interest rate for similar bonds is 12%. And interest on the bonds is payable semi annually in June 30 and December 31. So, for the present value of uh, maturity, so nandito na yung present value factor. But actually, how I get it in my standard calculator, I use the standard calculator. So, kunin mo lang yung effective interest. So, that's one, that's 12%, diba? So, ginagawa lang dyan is 112% divided by, tapos, ilan yung terms na to? So, remember ha, semi-annually ito. So, twice a year, nagre-recompute, kasi twice a year nagbabayad ng interest. Kaya twice a year tayo um, gumagamit ng um, kaya twice a year tayo gumagamit ng uh, or nagre-recompute ng effective interest. So for this, I should not use 1.12% pala. I should use uh, half of it lang, 6%, kasi nga, semi-annually. So yung 12% is for the whole month. Pero since this interest is payable semi-annually, on June 30 and December 31. So, we should get for the 6 months long, not the 12 months. So, that's 1.06% actually. Okay? So, 1.06. Tayo nyo, sa calculate nyo. 1.06 divided by, ilang periods yan? Diba? Semi-annually. So, that's 2, uh, two a year. And ilang years to 5. So, that's 2 times 5. That's 10. So, divide ko lang siya ng 10. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So that's 0.5583947. 
So, naka-round off na lang siya dito sa ating Excel file. But that, that's basically it. And to get this present value of the net interest payment, what I'll do, you can also use this as your technique kapag naka-standard calculator kayo. So, kapag nakuha niyo na to, yung 0.558395, minus 1 niyo lang, minus 1. So, ito yung lalabas, di ba? Divided by, magkano yung, ano yung effective interest niyo? 1.06. So, that's equals to 1 point, oh wait lang, 1.06 divided by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, minus 1 divided by 6. Okay, divided by 0 0.06. So, that is 7.36008. So, ulit ko 1.06 divided by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, minus 1, divided by 0 0.06. So, that's 7.36008. So, naka-round off lang yun dito sa Excel 10 natin. So, let us proceed. So, i-multiply lang natin sila. Yes. I-multiply lang natin sila. So, that is, magkano yung face value? 1 million. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. 1 million. So, i-multiply lang natin. So, 1 million times itong present value niya, syempre, so that's 1 million times 0.558395. So, for the interest payment naman, the present value of the interest per payment, so, of course, i- muna natin, magkano interest payment natin every semi-annual. So, that's actually just 1 million, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, times 15%, point 0.15, times 6 over 12. Or, para mas madali, we can also use half ng 15%. So, hati lang natin sa 2, syempre. So, that's 1 million times uh, 7.5 so it's just the same na 75,000 okay so let's use this one so kung para kunin yung present value etong 75,000 ita times natin siya sa uh, present value factor na 7.36008 so for a total of 552,006 so ibig sabihin ang total nating present value is 1,110,401. So, mas mataas ba siya sa face value or mas mababa? Siyempre, ang face value mo 1M lang. So, mas mataas siya. Kaya, meron kang premium on bonds payable. So, alam mo na agad kung magkano yung premium on notes payable mo, ba? Minus mo lang siya. Itong 1,1,1,1,0,4,0,0,1 minus 1 million. So, that is your premium on bonds payable. So, of course, your bonds payable is... Uh, bonds payable is 1 million. And the cash that you have received dahil sa iyong pangungutang is 1,110,401. So, it's equal both debit and credit side. Now, for the interest expense, we just have to... Actually, madali lang yan kapag dating natin dito sa amortization table. So, favorite. Ang ganda to. Medyo nakakalito siya sa una, pero once masanay ka na, it's actually very easy. So, ito lang siya. Ito yung ating present value, di ba? Equal na. So, so, to compute for the nominal interest, is actually just 1 million. Actually, na-compute na natin siya. Equals ko na lang siya dito sa 75. Ito yung interest na babayan mo every 6 months. So, it's just the same. So, copy-paste na lang natin siya. Copy-paste. Ngayon, si effective interest mo, it is always based on your previous um, carrying value. So, that's why we the times natin to sa 0 0.06. So, 6% is our effective interest rate. So, this one naman is the difference between letter A and letter B. So, ito yung amortization or yung mababawas every year sa yung premium, uh, sa yung premium on funds payable. So, yan ang mababawas. So, syempre, di ba, um, remember yung notes payable natin is the um, total of the bonds payable plus uh, 
premium on notes, uh, premium on amortization. So, itong 110 na to, remember, meron tong premium. Kaya, ibabawas mo tong amortization ni, kaya, ibabawas mo yung amortization ni premium. Kasi nga, itong 1110401 mo, may kasama dyang break premium. Kaya, pag inamortize mo, minus mo siya. So, i-copy-paste lang natin yung mga formula hanggang sa dulo. Control c Control v And at the end of our life, so meron lang tayong slight decimal difference, pero at the end of the life, magiging 1 million. So meron ka lang onting difference. Kasi nga, sobrang exact amounts yung ginamit natin. Pero basically, o oh, diba, may difference lang na 0.55. Pero basically, at the end of 12-31-2024, that is the time na babayaran mo na yung bonds mo, ang total mo lang babayaran is 1 million. So kung mapapansin to, Kung mapapansin nyo, very, very same siya dun sa ating um, um, notes payable illustration number 2 sa premium. Ito nga lang, mas complex lang siya na onte kasi we're talking about 5 years payment. So, every year, lahat tong year na to, magko-compute ka ng interest, expense ng interest payable. Pero, um, pero at the end of uh, the life or at the maturity, same naman na 1 million yung babayaran mo. Remember, yun dun sa atin kanina, di ba? Ang babayaran mo pa din is 320,000 sa notes payable. Siyempre, plus yung interest um, plus yung interest expense mo kay notes payable. Kasi kay notes payable, sa dulo yung interest expense. Pero dito, every semi-annual, nagbabayad ka ng 75, 75, 75, 75. So, actually, lahat ng kailangan mong balance at year-end, makukuha mo na dito kay amortization mo. Kay amortization table mo. So, especially pag naka-excel ka, madali kasi siya, di ba? Medyo mahirap lang siya kapag, limawa, nagmamanwasob ka. Pero, yun yung idea. Kailangan lang, alam mo kung saan ibibase yung pag-multiply ng interest for the stated interest and the effective interest, di ba? So, sample lang natin dito kay... Oh, this is date. So, sample lang lang natin, for example, nung 6.30, uh, nung June 30, nagbayad kang interest expense. So, this is very easy na lang, eh, di ba? So, interest expense mo effective, eh, di, ito lang, 66.624. Tapos, cash mo na binayaran, syempre, ito 75. So, magkano yung nabawas sa premium mo? This is 75 minus 66, or itong 8.375, di ba? Same. So, pagdating ng July, ay, ng December 31, 2021, bayad ka ulit. Ito lang din. So, actually, mas madali na talaga siya kapag naka-amortization table ka. So, premium on bonds payable, ito yan. And then, yung cash mo is 75. So, to check kung tama ang debit, 75, kaya 75, so equal. So, at year end, so, at year end, the balance will be... So, yung cash, marami nangyari sa cash mo, pero nagkaroon ka ng cash na... So, eto, yung related lang dito sa ating ano ah, sa, sa ating lang, um, sa ating lang transaction, yung nila-record natin. So, of course, nakareceive ka ng cash that year, pero nagbayad ka, of course, ng dalawang interest payment. So, eto yung effect ng bonds payable transaction mo sa iyong cash account. For 20, this is 20, 20. Okay? Ta-da! Okay, so now, magkano naman ang premium on bonds payable mo? Remember, meron ka munang sinet up na 110, pero nabawasan na siya ng 8, at saka ng 8878. So, ang total mo na lang siya at near end is 93,146. So, ang bonds payable mo, of course, yung phrase ang pinutukoy natin dyan, so, that's uh, that's 1 million. Ngayon, yung interest expense mo na papasok sa profit or loss mo, of course, it's actually the interest, effective interest expense. So, kung makikita nyo dito, ang binayaran nyo na interest payment is 150,000. Pero, ang interest expense nyo lang sa books is 132,000. Because, of course, the difference of 16,000 or 17,000 is an amortization for your premium bonds payable. Ngayon, since nabawala na si premium bonds payable nyo, magkano na ang presentation ni bonds payable at 2020? Add premium on bonds payable. 
So, shortcut na yan. So, 1 million plus 93,000. So, i-add natin yan. Ito yung value ng yung bonds payable at year. And kung mapapansin nyo, it's the same with your amortization table na so kapag equal yan, ibig sabihin, you did it correctly. Okay? So, and so on and so forth hanggang sa dulo, ganyan yung magiging record nyo. So, pagdating nyo ng dulong-dulo at your maturity, so, kung gusto nyo kompleto yung entry, add lang kayo ng um, rows dito and ituloy nyo yung entries. But then, on June or at the maturity date, so, punta na tayo kay maturity date, kunwari ano na ngayon, 12, 31, 20, 24. So, the interest will be, of course, same pa din, punin lang natin siya sa amortization table. So, 75,000 and then this one is 14,000. So, check. 75,000. So, pagdating mo ng dulo, ang bonds payable mo na is this one. So, since nagkaroon nga lang tayo ng uh, small decimal um, errors, are, so, ang gagawin na is 1 million. At decimal rounding off lang yung cost ng difference. So, it's not an error. So, and then, you have to pay cash of 1 million. So, kung baga, makikita mo dun sa mga previous years, nagbayad ka 75,000. Pero, Nagbayad ka ng 75,000, pero ang expense mo lang talaga doon is 60,849. So, kumbaga, yung 14, pumasok siya as, as amortization ng premium mo on bonds pay. Okay? So, for the, uh, since, since it's already 649 pala, um, I'll just give this file to you and then, actually, Hindi, sige. Try na natin mabilisan lang. It's just the same concept. Ang makaibahan lang, this one is discount. So, for this one, um, ito yung given. 1 million pa rin yung face. 12% stated rate. And market rate is 15%. So, compute lang natin. Nakuturo ko na naman sa inyo kung paano kumuha ng present value. So, compute lang natin ang present value. So, that's 1,000. So, sorry, babe. Para maganda yung format natin. So, that's 1,000. 1, 1, 2, 3, 1, 3. Times 0.485194. So, for the interest payment, kunin mo lang uli yung interest payment mo na 1, 2, 3. Times uh, 0, 0.0 maganda yung 0, 0.06 times Okay, 0 0.06. Ayan. So, 60,000 per um, 6 points. So, it times lang natin siya sa 60,000 times 6.86408. So, our present value is okay. See? Madali lang siya pagdating natin sa amortization table. Kaya i-record na natin siya. So, of course, your interest 1, 2, 3, and 3 times Ah, sorry, na na natin siya. It's equal 60,000. So, of course, let's just copy paste. Punain muna natin na then let's copy paste. So, ito, based on your previous carrying value, so times 0 0.075. And then, B minus A. And then, same, add lang natin siya dito. So, this is a discount, kaya padagdag siya. Hanggang sa maging 1 million siya sa dulo. So, i-copy paste lang natin siya. And let's hope 1 million siya sa dulo. Ang galing. So, okay. Ayan. Okay. So, we have 0.44 lang na decimal difference. And then, sa dulo niya is 1 million. So, same with kanina. Let's just record it. We have cash of, well, we have bonds payable of how much is one. And then the discount is, of course, one million less the present value. And the cash is, uh, the cash is, of course, your present value. Your present value. Okay. So, let's check kung tama, 1 million. So, for this example, meron lang siyang sinabi na meron kayo 
um, meron ka rin 20,000 na bondage cost. Ah, okay, sorry. Uh -huh. Binigay pala niya na your bonds were sold at 917,039. So, before kasi wala tayong binigay na uh, kung magkano yung sold mo, ba? So, ngayon, nakalagay siya na 917,039. So, pag minus mo siya, mapapansin natin na 82,961 siya. Pero different siya kapag minus natin si 1 million, siya ka to. So, kasi dyan, kasama sa new balance mo, yung, amort, uh, yung transaction cost. So, since this is a financial asset, itong transaction cost natin, isasama natin siya dito sa ating initial recognition. Kaya kung i-add natin to, actually, magiging 102,961 din siya. So, to check our balance, 1020, so equal siya, so bangga tayo. So, very easy interest expense, katulad lang din kanina, the effective interest. The discount amortization, get from the amortization table, and the cash is 60000 Okay, so, dito ka. And so, debit, 67 and credit, 67 to So, it's an equal, so same procedure applied here, applied here, and applied here. So, pagdating natin ng year end, our final entry will be same ulit. It's the, this one, and this one, and this one. So, at the end of the period, we have 1 million na ating nababayaran at the maturity date. So, these are, again, all the entry. Na, so, if you can compute for the balance at year end, same with this. You can follow this. So, you will see the... So, go. Sample natin dito kay December 31. December 31, 2020. So, ang bonds payable mo is 1 million. And then, si premium bonds mo... Eh, ay, si discount on DP mo. Discount. Discount on DP is... So, that's... 82... Plus 20 minus itong mabawas mo ng 2 years. Okay. So, e, minus lang natin siya. Ang total mo ay, so it should be equal with your amortization table. Okay. So, that's it. It's the same 912-140.69. So, that is the end for our accounting for bonds here. So, actually, we're running out of time and we only have five minutes left. But let me just do na lang a quick, quick, quick uh, rundown and introduction for the shareholders' equity. So, actually, shareholders' equity is a very, very broad topic. There's a lot of discussion that you have to do when you're discussing shareholders' equity. So, basically lang, for the shareholders' equity, it is in the corporation form of, uh, of business. So, alam naman natin na maraming corporation today. And let me just give you a sample of the Ayala Corporation uh, equity section. So, as I'm telling you, makikita niyo lahat ng yan. These are all the topics under shareholders' equity. And of course, hindi natin siya madidiscuss na agad-agaran. So, equity is the residual interest of owners in the net assets of a corporate enterprise. And as you can see, maraming, uh, maraming movement na nangyayari pagdating sa shareholders' equity. So, e, let's just give you a brief background sa usually yung nakikita for the equity. So, dito makikita nyo si paid in capital na lagi natin yan nakikita, si contributed capital and si additional paid in capital. Now, actually, this all uh, the definitions here, you can actually um, just read it and then you can be familiarized with it. So, actually, dito sa shareholders' equity, on lang talaga yung... Um, so, actually, dito sa shareholders' equity, hindi na naman pala naka-share C. So, dito talaga, maraming... Um, so, dito talaga sa shareholders' equity, maraming i-discuss, pero on lang talaga yung nilagay ko dito kasi alam kong mahaba ang discussion yung kailangan dito. 
So, actually, ang basic lang nito, kailangan lang natin i-define ang contributed capital. It is the par value. O kung wala namang par value, it is the contributed capital by the shareholders. So, actually, ito lang yung uh, itatakal ko dapat today. And then, so the ordinary capital, the preference capital. So, uh, in accounting for this, it's actually very easy. Kung ano lang yung par value, that's the one that you record in paid in capital. As you can see for this example, the paid in capital is the par value of 10 pesos times 100,000 na number of shares to be sold. So, since the selling price mo is 14, yung 4 na excess, that is the additional paid in capital. So, basically, ganun lang siya kadali. Kaya ito lang yung sinabi ko kung basic dahil na medyo windang-windang na tayo sa bonds payable. So, for the shareholders equity, you just read the definitions included in the slide. And then, um, here is the accounting for the issuance of share capital. So, kapag wala namang par value, um, you can use the fair value of the non-cash consideration received, the fair value of the share capital issued, or the par and stated of the share capital issued. So, for this kasi, for example, wala lang sinabing amount or even katulad nung kanina, i-record lang natin siya using these three methods. So, for this example, we use the fair value of the non-cash asset na binigay sa atin. So, since um, 12 million yung fair value ng land, then ang paid-in capital natin is 10 million, which is 100 ordinary shares. So, 100,000 of ordinary shares yung binayad natin times 100. So, that's 10 million. And then, the additional paid-in of cap capital is the excess from the par value. So, lagi lang namang excess si APIC. So, kapag wala namang cash price kay land, pwede natin gamitin yung fair value nung, uh, nung stock. So, ang fair value ni stock is 130. So, it's very easy. 130 times 100,000. So, 13 million yung value ng land. And for the paid-in capital, same lang na 10 million sa paid-in capital and 3 million sa APIC. So, it's actually quite straightforward, kaya very short lang yun yung discussion natin for that. Just to give you a very, very, very brief um, introduction for the shareholders' equity. So, actually, that's the end of my discussion. I hope you really, really learned a lot. And I know you'll still uh, encounter many, many things uh, with your accounting journey, sa school nyo, sa CPA, even in work. There's a big world out there. Uh, just remember na... Um, one step at a time lang. So, minsan pag na-overwhelm kayo sa mga studies nyo, just take a break. Right? So, ito yung mga topics on the in intermediate accounting and we had a brief discussion, uh, uh, we had discussions on topic 1 and 2 and a very brief intro for topic 3. Pero actually, marami pang topics sa intermediate accounting. So, um, I hope you do learn from this um, in uh, this tutorial. So, for your next step, remember to review, review, review. Yun lang talaga yung solution para talagang ma-familiarize kayo sa mga topic. And when you feel like you're so overwhelmed, don't forget to take a break. And follow my shameless blog. And, you know, you can go to my um, YouTube channel. I will be uploading tutorial sessions in the future in there. So, you can um, follow it and... I hope to see you there. As for my references, the book that I use in this uh, tutorial session is The Intermediate Accounting by Professor Nanita Robles and Professor Patricia Employee. So these are the books that I also used when I was in college. And this, were, this is the reference that I did as I discussed to you today. So please, uh, if, you, if you may if, or if you want to watch some tutorial sessions, then you can go to my channel that I will just be uploading them in the near future once I get to shoot them. So it's a busy season right now. I don't have much time and I hope to upload videos though. So thank you. If you have any questions, you can contact us and that's it. I hope you really get to learn from this tutorial session. Don't waste time and uh, yun lang. Kailangan lang talaga ng tsaga para sa accounting, para sa pagiging CPA. Long journey but it's a very, uh, it's a very fulfilling one. Maraming challenges, pero kayang-kaya niya yun. Basta tsaga-tsaga niya. So, that's all. And, and now, I'm giving back the floor to our host. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you po sa advice na binigay niyo po. And...
Thank you for the information po na sinare ninyo. And once again po, thank you po sa time, effort, sa tiyaga po na ibinigay ninyo. And guys, alam nyo na, yung YouTube ni ma'am. Yes. And of course, yes. 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 yung mga tutorial po natin. Yeah. Then, pwede po natin na mapanood itong discussion na ito because nakarecord naman po siya sa FB po. Pwede nga replay. Just in case, um, gusto niya mabalikan yung mga nasabi ni ma'am, mga tinuro niya sa kanyang lecture. Okay po. Um, so since, alam ko po yung iba sa atin, eh, gustong gusto na mag-dinner. <laughs> so, Dito po natin siya tatagalin. I would like to call on po the president of Dabs Dabsu Junior Philippine Institute of Accountants, si President Kevin Peñalosa po for his closing remarks as well uh, as for the thank you message. Good evening guys. So please wear, please bear with me lang ano due to unforeseen circumstances I cannot turn on my camera. May clean closing remarks lang naman po to. So, yun, makinig na lang po. Um, it has been one fruitful af afternoon for us, no? especially the students, for having learned not only essential accounting techniques and concepts, but also valuable lessons in life that will surely aid them as they move forward in their journey. To our speaker, Ms. Sian, and our life coaches, Ms. Catherine and Ms. Clarissa, we hereby extend to you our utmost gratitude to our ever-supportive and proactive Dean and Academic Chairperson, Dean Luisito Reyes and Mr. Jason Carrion. Thank you for your unwavering support. I would also like to commend my fellow JPA officers and the YRAC organization for a job well done, as well as our contingency masters of ceremony, that entertained us with their charm and humor. This global pandemic may have indeed hindered us from realizing the fullest of our potential, yet honing one's capability should not solely rely from his or her environment. Success isn't about the fancy name extensions, nor the high salary, the glory, nor the fame. Success all lies beneath the sheer passion and drive to carry on amid struggles and trials. It may indeed be hard, difficult perhaps, but never impossible. Embrace the journey. Celebrate for it and not the destination. You are the person that you think you are. The world is what you make out of it. Seize your dreams, young CPA in transit. Good evening and God bless us all. Thank you for to our uh, uh, WCJP president, President Kevin Penalosa. Now we will proceed for some at awarding of the certificates. Um, certificate of Appreciation is presented to Ms. Clarissa Isabel Reyes for sharing her words of wisdom and encouragement as the motivational coach during the webinar about key topics in intermediate accounting, notes, bonds, payables, mm -hmm. shareholders, equity, provision, given this 17th day of April 2021. Thank you, Evangeline. Thank you, JP. It's a privilege to be part of this team and to join you sa tutorial na to tonight. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. And next po, this Certificate of Appreciation is presented to CNM Cruz CPA CMA for sharing her valuable knowledge as a guest speaker about key topics in intermediate accounting, notes, bonds, payable shareholders, equity, 
and provision given this 17th day of April 2021. Thank you. Next po, uh, thank you po ulit sa ating mga speakers for today. You imparted a lot of knowledge po and sure po kami na magagamit po namin yung lahat. Yeah. Ara kayo mabuti. <laughs> glad to have Glad to have shared my um, knowledge and experiences with you guys. So, ayun lang, tiyaga tiyaga lang kayo para sa inyong subjects. And since we are in a pandemic nga, don't forget to give yourself a break and to take care of yourself, of course. So, it's your investment to yourself. Hindi kayo pwedeng maging CPA kung hindi kayo healthy pagdating ng time na yon. So, magingat kayo, alagaan nyo sarili nyo. And just remember na life is not just accounting. So, coming from a CPA, life is not just accounting. So, there are many more... Um, things that you have to give importance to in life like your physical, mental health, your spiritual and emotional health. So, ayun lang, just balance everything and I hope na even with this pandemic, even with the online classes and even hindi kayo makablik sa face-to-face, -face, I just, I still hope na ayun, uh, makapag-aral kayong maayos and still maging um, fruitful yung year na to para sa inyo. So, ayun lang, salamat! Thank you rin po, ma'am. And now, Okay po, proceed na po tayo sa announcements. Um, before po, um, before ko po ibigay yung, uh, bigay ko po, before ko po bagay, before ko po ibigay virtually yung mic sa wire. <laughs> uh, gusto ko lang po sabihin, don't forget to like po yung page po ng ating uh, Davisu JP. Uh, and then po, meron pong ilalagay na evaluation form sa comment box. Pakicheck na lang po and pakifill up. So now I would like to call on po Ms. Leslie Ann Warde for, for her additional announcements po. Thank you po. Hi everyone. <laughs> Magandang gabi. Ayan, so proceed po tayo sa ating announcements. Ayan. So I highly invite everyone to join our youth night from Youth on the Rock National po. This is every Wednesday po, 7.30 to 9pm. So sa mga... Um, Nauubusan na po ng brain cells dyan at gusto mag-unwind no? at mabuhay yung mga brain cells nilang namamatay na. Pwede, pwede po kayong mag-join dito. This is free po. Wala pong... Mag-enjoy lang tayo. <laughs> Sigurado ako mag-enjoy kayo. So, kung free po kayo that time, you can join us. You can PM us, mga nasa uh, GMIT po, mga officers. And you can follow our uh, Facebook page. Tama ba? Facebook page. <laughs> na Youth on the Rock para po sa mga link sa mga events po natin. Ayan. So, we also provide po e-certificates po sa ating mga webinars. Next, we have Youth Talk every Friday po, 6pm. This is um via FB Live po. So, mga pag-usapan dito is about sa buhay ng youth. Yan, sa buhay natin. So, sa buhay ng mga Gen Z. Online, unwind po tayo. <laughs> Ayan. Next, <clears throat> eto, so we, we have po a change challenge. So, kung ikaw ay guro or siguro student, yan tayo, kabataan ang gusto mong magbago at gusto mo din makapagbago. Yan, you can join our change challenge wherein you can be mentored by our leaders and coaches like Ate Clar, Coach Clar, yan, Coach uh, Mondi, towards life change and purpose. So, naghanap ko ng purpose, tamang-tama to para sa'yo. Just contact us and we will gladly join you with you towards change. Okay. Now, I'm not see you po. <laughs> and yan. So, we uh, highly appreciate po kung makakasama po kayo sa aming Youth Geek this coming April 29, 2021. Youth Geek presents What Does the Clock Say? Ting, ning, 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 ning. <laughs> Ayaw ko alam niyong kanta. Diba? It's time to change. This is 7.30pm to 9pm po via Zoom and Messenger Room. So, kung free po kayo, yan. Pwede nyo po kaming i-chat, pwede nyo kaming i-PM, at sisendan din po namin kayo ng link. Okay? So, yun lang. See you po. Thank you.
Once again po, thank you. Thank you po sa mga student na hanggang ngayon ay nasa meeting pa po. And sa mga, sa mga speaker po natin na nagtyagang mag-discuss ng napakahabang oras. And especially sa JPA and YRAC po. Thank you dahil kung hindi po sa inyo na nag-attend sa meeting na ito, hindi po ito magiging possible. And now we proceed na po sa ating prayer. Yes, I call Evangeline Elizabeth Bernal po. Yes. Thank you, Vanessa. Um, to uh, Before we officially close for our meeting, um, I would like to ask you to join me in our closing prayer. So let us all close our eyes and feel the presence of the Lord. Heavenly Father, as we come towards the end of the webinar, we thank you for what has been accomplished during our meeting. Lord, we thank you for the life of everyone present here today in this meeting who, who wholeheartedly devoted their time and effort to make all of this possible. Lord, we are grateful for the knowledge that our speakers have imparted to us, and we will make sure to make use of it as we go along towards our dreams to become successful professionals. Please continue to bless the organizations involved for today's activity, the Dabso Junior Philippine Institute, Institute of Accountants and Youth on the Rock, so that they may be able to continue to use their platforms to share knowledge and inspire people. Lord, we glorify your name. All praise and worship belongs to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Paul, for joining the meeting today. Thank you, everyone. See you later. Keep safe.